Hi everyone, we're back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt. However, this week is actually Ocean Week. Uh, I think it's been a week long, or it's going, it is and it's going to be a week long celebration uh, celebrating the oceans and I think that people have had like scientists on everything. Uh, we're not going to quite have that entirely here, but we're still going to be matching the underwater theme. So instead of being Speed Runs from the Crypt this week, we're going to be Speed Runs from the Deep to kind of celebrate the whole ocean theme, because if it's not apparent, our theme this week is going to be underwater games. Also, I guess all I really have for this is uh, I'm wearing a shirt with a bird on it, because I guess birds have uh, some relevance to the ocean. Uh, they work to that degree, it, it works. Anyway, I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far, and hope you're all doing good. Um, going on to the theme, uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's kind of weird. There's a lot of horror games, also not a lot of horror games uh, that kind of go into the deepest parts of the ocean, which is really trippy because the ocean we've barely explored. I think we've actually done more exploration in outer space than the depths of the ocean. So, you know, horror is a fitting genre for this. They, it, gets, it gets pretty deep in the, the abyss. Anyway, going into the area of water horror games, our first one is going to be Bioshock, and I'll actually be running this one for you all, so uh, hopefully you will enjoy this, but before we go to that, uh, I just kind of want to mention that we're going to have a nice, uh, you know, roster of games today, and if you are watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash games done quick. Anyway, without further ado, hope you're all been having a great week, and let's dive on into Bioshock. And then, uh, normally I say take it away to the runner, but this week it's me! So, uh, I'm, that's, it's always weird going into that part. <laughs> Alright. Let's just see. There we go. My game already crash? Might have. Nope, there it is. Nope, no it did. Wow. Well, oh, no, there we go, we good. Yay! And the audio is there, cool. Anyway, this is Bioshock. This is one of the classic, uh, you know... A lot of people don't know that this is a horror game, oddly enough. Uh, it was marketed as a horror game, and it definitely plays as a horror game. Anyway, uh, time can in once we click on the crash right here, which I'll explain why we do that in one moment. So, on the count of three, two, one, let's go. Alright, so Bioshock. A lot of people don't expect this to be a horror game, but when it came out, it was actually marketed as a horror game, and it's based off the original System Shocks. Uh, we're going to do our first skip immediately by going through the fire. Uh, this isn't normally recommended, but since we're doing the any percent category of this, we're going to be able to go straight through the fire and go to the Pivotal Lighthouse and make our way to the deep. Uh, this is going to be the original version of the game because the remaster is not quite going to have what we need. This is not a rerun, uh, I just kind of needed an ocean game, and uh, for the time being, Bioshock was going to be the primary focus. Um, today's schedule is going to feature Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and it's also going to have Soma. As well, you're going to make my joke really early. This is live, but chat is pre-recorded. It's kind of fun that you can make that early. But yeah, you'll see why later, why we use the original version. You'll actually kind of see it looks more like uh, the game came out in, like, what, 2007? Which would be trippy. Also, here's our first skip of the game. We are going to jump backward and pull the bathysphere. What that's going to be doing is that's going to let me ride on top of the bathysphere, as you can see here. Uh, normally, you'll kind of be riding inside. You'll watch a little short film. Uh, but now we can, uh, we can have this one. So, yeah. Uh, we have a nice little wait period while we go to the, what, the different levels of fathoms. You can also see different uh, different fish, and you know what, chat and everyone, I'm gonna ask you all, what's your favorite fish? Uh, I'm not exactly as well versed as some of the scientists you may have been seeing this week, but on my I end, um, I, I like the moray eels. I think they're really cool. I, I like jellies. I'm not exactly sure where they fall under the definition of fish, but uh, yeah, uh, I like jellyfish. I like the moray eel. I love manta rays. I think they're really cool. Um, I learned that sharks are apparently a type of fish. I'm never sure of that one. And uh, for fish facts, in the world of Bioshock, um, whenever you see animals, they only move if they're visible. So uh, normally these crabs aren't meant to be visible, but since I can see them, you can see they're just sort of frozen in place. I don't think this is apparent of real animals, but, um, you know, that's how it goes. And uh, you'll be able to see fish here. We have the blobfish. I don't think Cthulhu counts, but he is a horror water creature. Tuna, tuna's good. But yeah, you can see the fish are freezing. They're only paid enough to be on camera. So once they get off camera, it's fine. Moreau? Moreau is a good fish. He is a good boy. Salmon? No, not to eat the fish, Swedish fish. That's eating fish. 
<laughs> How about non non uh, non eaten fish? Uh, non non food based fish. Catfish. Catfish are nice. Also, I learned that there's differences between freshwater fish and saltwater fish. And if you try putting a freshwater fish in saltwater, it will die. Also, here is a whale shark. It's apparently one of the largest fish in existence. Well, it's not a fish, though. Whale sharks are mammals, I think. I don't know. But uh, the cool part about the whale shark is he's only paid enough to move while he's on camera, so he's dead stopped in that background area, as you can see. He's no longer moving. So, you like giraffes? I don't think giraffes have gills. They're not a fish. But in fairness, I'm wearing a bird shirt, and birds aren't any fish. Swordfish, they're a good example. Anyway, but you're wondering, why in the world am I riding on top of this? That skip saves three seconds. Uh, loading into the screen right here, the one we just did, um, it's based on the player model. So given I'm on top of the bathosphere instead of in the middle of it, I'm gonna get to the loading screen faster, and now we got cold, so we're back inside. And now we're in the underwater city of Rapture. Betas then? Beta fish are cool. I had a beta fish when I was a kid. I don't remember much else about that, but I have one. The whale shark is a fish. Thank you for that. I like the sunfish. They're, they're big. <clears throat> I do like the appeal of Ocean Week and the whole underwater theme as well. Uh, I've had some wonderful times at different aquariums. They're nice to go to. Uh, I've been to a variety of them, and they're always really, really cool. I think my favorite part of the aquarium is, though, jellies. <clears throat> The jellyfish, man. Have you ever seen the jellies in an aquarium? They're really trippy. They're like, they just, they look cool. It's like looking in a submarine. But then it's, you know, pretty jellyfish. That's cool then. So the whale shark is a fish. I guess it's closer to the shark family. And I know whales traditionally and uh, dolphins uh, are more of a porpoise and they're mammals and they will die if they're underwater for too long. Is the lobster a fish? Well, it's underwater. Good question, Amkut. So the reason why we do the OG game is because I'm going to be doing certain glitches later uh, that are going to allow me to um, skip massive portions of the game. However, this only works on the original version of the game. Uh, the remastered version won't really have this because it's not going to let me do the fling. It, um, later in the game, you'll see me getting great vertical leap. And instead, the remastered version will give you horizontal. Uh, also, the intro of the game is nice because it's a lot of waiting. The whale shark is a shark, and I learned shark breathe underwater and they are fish. Oh yeah, I guess uh, one fun fact I know about, sharks aren't really all that deadly. They're actually pretty chill. Uh, more people die to vending machines than they do sharks. So remember, sharks are our friends. The sharks are our friends. You are more likely to die to a vending machine. Anyway, time to get into the actual speed run of the matter. Uh, I'm gonna murder this man. It is a horror game after all, he's dead. What we're going to do now is we're gonna begin our first glitch. Uh, normally, you get a long cutscene after getting the Electrobolt. However, I don't wanna watch it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quick save while grabbing the Electrobolt. You can see it is going, I'm now gonna save the game, and I'm going to load the game. Is there any master category? I believe there should be. And now I should be able to move. You can see I got into a cutscene, and hey, I have electricity. But the game's on trick pulling me back. There we go. Ah, game. There we go. The reason why the game's gonna pull me back is because the game wants me to watch the cuts. Game. Game. Can I aim? Hold on. There we go. The game wants you to watch the cutscene. Is this live? Yes, but chat is pre recorded. I'm gonna have to bunny hop my way through this entire level. This won't be the whole game, it's only gonna be this one level. Uh, there's a very long cutscene where the little sister finds you, you get stabbed by the big daddy, and then you are able to start moving again. I don't want to watch that because, you know, forced cutscenes aren't really fast. However, you may notice that the game's going to be kind of weird now because I'll be doing this bunny hopping, so to speak. Oh, sorry, look, fish! Uh, these fish are not doing well, though. They're out of water and they are um, in a bad shape. Uh, all I'm going to do right now is jump past the trash can, look backward. This guy spawns for a fight. I'm going to look back once again, and he'll go right there. I'm not going to zap him, and I'm going to whack him. He's dead. I'm not going to take this as well, and we are going to keep going. We follow a script. We do follow a script sometimes. That script is me making the same dumb joke I make every time. Uh, there's two ways of doing this jump. Um, I like to personally use the space bar. I'm just kind of used to jumping the space bar. It's very handy to me. However... Uh, a lot of people also use the... Hold on. Oh, good. That's really lucky. 
a lot of people will also end up using a uh, scroll wheel because scroll wheel allow you to kind of keep jumping as you move uh, this is kind of one of the early game parts but this ends up saving a lot of time the main thing is kind of adjusting and knowing that hey you have to be able to not what's the word get drawn back too much and now we finally get our stats page after you know the whole game's intro <laughs> Yeah, I love Bioshock when it came out. It's a beautiful game. We'll be able to see plenty of the underwater setting while we're going between all the different levels. And uh, you also have that, what, the 1950s Art Deco, I think is the official uh, naming convention for this. There we go. So now you keep moving. We have a gun. Now, what the gun's going to help me with is, well, to make... Wow. That's fine. We're going to go around. Uh, it's always a bad thing if you end up jumping on things like party hats or pipes because uh, they can kind of get you off base. All right, so the next part of this trick, there is going to be a cutscene here, and this cutscene wants me to lower my weapon. This is not the remastered version. We have to use the original because it's going to let me do massive skips later. Um, this is actually one of the skips I'm able to do. So normally you have to lower your weapon, but since I save and loaded the game, it's going to break the cutscene to where I'm able to bring out my weapons. While this doesn't seem like a massive thing, what's going to happen is um, normally this area will block you because there is a lock. However, now that I have my weapon, good game. There we go. I can break said lock. I don't need to watch a cutscene now, and it saves me time. I don't know why my game also lags every now and again. It just started doing that recently, and I'm kind of worried. Uh, that's why my estimate's a bit longer than usual. <laughs> All right, uh, we're almost at the end of our jumping section. Uh, we're going to be getting into a minor fight. Think about fighting like this, by the way. Uh, that's going to be the fun part. Uh, the way this is going to work, why is it like I'm just walking backwards? The game's trying to pull me back into a cutscene that I skipped, because uh, the game wants me to watch that cutscene. I don't want to watch it, though, because, well, that would be bad. Oh, I whiffed that. That's fine. Dead. I have to aim and land precise shots while it's trying to pull me back. The only way I can move forward is by jumping. Incorrect. We're gonna get the this door open after killing about five people. Uh, the one back there, the two there, and then two more. We don't have to worry anymore. Now we can head over to medical. Once you get to medical, we're no longer gonna be jumping. We'll be back to regular. Uh, fun fact, by the way. Once we get to this next room, normally there's going to be a cutscene, another one, where Andrew Ryan's like, hey, what are you doing here? I don't want to watch that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and zap the door. If you walk forward, the door will close, you get the cutscene. If you zap it, you just open it, and it saves a lot of time. <laughs> See? Nice and easy. We just watch it, and we go. It will pull you through the wall. If you let it pull you through the wall, it will do it, but it's only certain walls. Uh, but now we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, now we're back to normal. You can see I'm no longer being dragged. We're good to go. If it did for the whole game, that would be very painful. Anyway, a cool part about this game is the first time you boot it up, the answer will always be the same. So I already know what it is. I can just type that in. Very easy peasy. And now we can kind of begin the gunplay. We're going to make our way through the levels pretty much entirely. Like, you have to do every level in the game. Uh, some levels will be very short as a result of this um, because I can instantly skip parts of them. But we will be able to be pretty fast going through all the levels. But there's no, like, major go-to-immediately-to-the-end-of-the-game skips in this game. I'm going to wait right here because currently there's, like, a flashback ghost that's supposed to show you images of horror. I guess people kind of dealing with the underwater city of Rapture. And, uh, yeah, we're still making way through here. While I'm kind of walking, though, I want to talk about a fun fact. Um, I guess speaking of underwater cities, I know there is a YouTube channel that is dedicated to a parody of Bioshock, and it's called Hampshire, and it's hamsters living in an underwater city. I just want to mention that because it's always hilarious when I think about it. Uh, also, we play on the any percent category, so this is just going to be straight up easy. Um, and I began from the loaded file because that's going to allow me to get the intro cutscene, and it's just a better place to start. All right. So right now we got our first plasmid. This is incinerate. This is going to give me the ability to, you know, remove ice. Removing ice is going to be rather handy. We're also going to be grabbing a tape. This doesn't sound like much right now, but it's going to be very important once you get further into the game. And we're going to grab our second and only other plasmid, telekinesis. Uh, we get rid of electricity, and now we have incinerate and telekinesis. These will be the only plasmids in the game we're going to be using. They're very, very powerful. And yeah, the idea of hamsters is pretty cool. The hamsters are going like little tubes underwater, and 
It's neat to imagine hamster society underwater. And I guess hamster society in general. There we go. Also, if you did not know, uh, this game does have an auto splitter. So if you're learning how to speed on this game, uh, it is a community made one and it will split on every level. All right, so we're gonna get ready for one of our first major glitches. Um, we're going to be able to do some depth warps later, but first I'm gonna grab this box. Uh, by grabbing this box, I am going to be able to jump over this wall by doing this box to fall in a certain way. Box. Box. There we go. Box. 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 This is why we make saves. Uh, medical. I had a feeling I should have saved earlier. So, who wants to watch that again? Oh, I accidentally threw the box. And now this is RNG. That's the fun part. It's not always going to be the same. Yeah, it's a pretty fun time. That is all right. Don't worry, I'll get it the second time, and then we'll say first try, and then it'll all be okay. So we're actually going for the good ending. The good ending is going to be slightly faster. F, F. I'm just gonna say, by the way, that the last time I did this run on a hotfix, I ended up failing the first glitch, and then the rest of the run was fine. This has never happened before. Actually, it happened in practice. Kind of. Something else happened in practice, if I fix that one. I thought I should save the game right before I enter that room. This time I'm gonna do it. I should trust my hunch. Yeah, the physics in this game can be kind of wonky, especially when you get to like things like the boxes. Anyway, I get to explain this once again. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. This is why we have estimates, by the way. I'm gonna say that right now. That is why I put the estimate there for the one hour. Originally, I thought 55 minutes. I was like, you know what? One hour, just in case. No, so fun part about the good ending. You only need to save one little sister. You only need one. Uh, it's kind of a morality system. So the way the good ending is gonna work for you is if you save a positive number of people, you get the good ending. If you save a, you know, if you kill more people than you save, you get the bad ending. And that's the only real distinction. I'm not sure how to get the morally gray ending, but it's pretty much just doing one and the other. And it's kind of weird. Um, realistically, it's not a major choice. It's a really minor reason why you save time. And I'll explain that once we get to that reason. But, hey, look at that. Now we're back to where we were. Honestly, I thought this was going to be much worse of a uh, time loss. It's really not that bad. So you're already back to where we were. Except this time. There we go. This time. I'm going to do my... Uh, what my hunch told me to do. I'm going to save... I don't trust the game. Have you saved none? Does the game crash? You know, I've never actually tried that. I've never tried it. I don't know. All right, I also say, by the way, this time it is looking to be perfect. So I'm gonna save the game on here now, and now we are going to fling. First try. See, I told you, see? We'd get it first try when we got back here. So the reason why I had to do that glitch is because that's gonna prevent the Vita Chamber from activating. Uh, if you play this game casually, you'll know uh, there are sort of things in this game called the Vita Chambers or Vita Chambers. Those let you revive. I don't want the one in this room activating. So by jumping over the wall, it never activates. Uh, let's see if I get this glitch. All right, cool. I got one of the hardest glitches in the game. Uh, by throwing the box at this guy, his dialogue ends early. And now uh, I kill them immediately by throwing that at him. See, I told you. I mess up the easy stuff so I can just show you how it all goes. It's definitely fully intended. It's the, you know, uh, it's difficulty adjustment, I'm making the game easier. Not really, I'm lying entirely. I mess it up. All right, so now I'm gonna take some damage. The reason I wanna take damage is gonna be death abusing once again. By going into this back corner, this is going to activate another Vita Chamber. You get the good ending of being more. I didn't even know that part. Good answer. Bot Thunder will definitely know that one. He is a, a great runner of many a games. 
All right, anyway, with that being said, I'm back to the beginning of the level. The cool part about this is the end of the level is in the beginning of the level. So all you have to do is make your way here and you're done the level. Calculated, exactly. All right, now our Neptune's bounty. So you need more water puns, like fish. You see, chat, there's nothing fishy about what I just did. It was all... I, I don't have any more fish puns. I kind of only have the one. I'm sorry. But yes. All right. So now we are going into Neptune's Bounty. Neptune's Bounty is going to be a pretty cool area because we get to fight a big daddy. It's dead. And uh, we are going to save the little sister. This is the only one in the game we'll be saving. And hey. The fade out always confuses me. Thank you. Hold on, give this. I'm gonna shoot this thing five times. And now I wanna take the rocket. Uh, by taking this rocket, get out of the way. By taking this rocket, I'm going to launch it up in here. There's a splicer up there. The splicer's dead. So by killing the splicer there, that is going to allow me to get the dialogue for the mission to get the camera. Meaning I can start the mission with Peach. Uh, right now we're going to take this barrel, and this barrel is going to allow me to uh, go up to that roof. I want the barrel to be in a certain spot, which is usually facing forward. Um, it's, these barrels are quite nice. Every time I do one of these flings, I save the game. I can make a terrible pun right now, because it's really forced, and I kind of want to. I'll just say it's better to be safe than scurvy. Wait, do pirates have anything to do with the ocean? They do, right? I think they do. I think that counts. Hey, scurvy is a serious disease, though. I'm just gonna say that right now. It's a very serious disease. Why well, save the little sister? It's going to be faster later. No problem. Glad you've been enjoying it. I do a lot of different horror games and horror game speedruns, so, you know, every now and again I get to show up on the show to uh, kind of fill in the blanks. Anyway, there is a skip you can do here. However, I'm not the best at landing it, but you can get uh, two pictures on that one guy right there. Uh, if you can get the two pictures, you can save one picture. It's nice, but it's not like a major amount of time saved, but it is nice if you can get it. Oh yeah, I guess another fun ocean fact I can give you, chat. You know that there's like rivers and lakes underwater? Sometimes that's really trippy to me. Also, hey look, a jump scare. Got the picture. Hey look, another jump scare. All right, we're done with the mission. You only have to get pictures of splicers. Uh, getting those pictures immediately ends if you know that they're there. Uh, they're just to scare you and then like, oh my god, I get to chase them down and kill them. Uh, I know they're there, so I can just take the picture and run away. All right, so me on low health. Hey, look, a crab. Ooh, you know what? One of my favorite sea animals is the uh, Japanese spider crab. If you've never seen one of those uh, crabs, they are massive. They're huge crabs. And they're really cool. Can I play Outlast? I can play the any percent. Also, now it's time for another uh, fun bit of tech. By playing these tapes, I'm going to be able to skip in-game dialogue. Uh, the way that this works is story dialogue will be considered mandatory. Uh, optional dialogue will kind of be considered more of a temporary thing. So what I can do is I can play optional tapes and I will skip mandatory tapes. And mandatory tapes will prolong things. Keep that in mind for right now, it's gonna be quite neat as we go through the story. Normally there's dialogue and a fight won't start, but I can go to the tape, play it, and then we'll be able to start a fight. Let's see. A pirate's favorite letter is not R, it's C. Where did he go? There you are. Come back here. Wait, how did you... How did you live that? Well, back to that summer... There, he's dead. I don't know how he avoided that, but he found a way. Get out of the way! The real villain was Peach, exactly. 
All right, and now we have all our weapons back and a weapon I've never grabbed, the shotgun. We're gonna be doing our one upgrade of the game on our grenade launcher. We're increasing the damage we do. Uh, that is going to be much nicer in the upcoming end game fights. All right, and now we're going to the next level. This is gonna be one of the levels that, like, the next three levels are all going to immediately end, and it's gonna be really fun. So it is quite literally going to be a blink and you miss it sort of deal. Yeah, it's a fun game. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is, uh, this is normally the level where Andrew Ryan, you kind of meet him as a threat, and he is going to, um, do something really bad, let's just say bad. I don't want really to spoil the fun here. Uh, we have a minor glitch where we can jump up the slope. Um, you have to see at the end I slow down a little bit. If you land the jumps the whole time, you're going to be able to carry your movement speed going forward, which is going to be slightly faster than the alternative of getting stuck. But you can kind of see the difference there quite nicely. Uh, right now, we're going to be going into the control booth, and then normally what would happen is the control booth will lock. I don't want that happening though, because that would be slow. So you may notice the door's already open and I can move forward. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna start saving the game. By doing that, I'm now gonna mash the action button and walk backward, I'm out of the room. I don't have to worry about uh, the door closing because I already know it's gonna close. Uh, now is the most important part of the skip. If I don't land, this will be sad. All right, let's see if I get it. It's very important I land this. Oh no, wait a minute. His family. Oh no, they're dead. We killed Moira and Patrick. See, he's so sad. I can't believe Andrew Ryan blew up the sub. It definitely wasn't us, it was Andrew Ryan. And yes, this is the original because the flings do not work on the remastered. At least to my understanding, they move you horizontal from what I've heard. So when you speed on this game, you want to be on the original. Anyway, you can tell I didn't blow up the sub. It was Andrew Ryan. I didn't do it. It was Andrew Ryan. See, he's gonna say it's Andrew Ryan. See, we're fine. Did you replay him the kill of us killing his family? I think we got a replay for that. Anyway, uh, this will be the fling that we can do. Uh, this is the trick in particular I was talking about that doesn't work on the uh, remaster. This only works on the original. So, Whee! you can leap like 30 feet in the air. If only your friend could look now, we're going to be taking some pictures because that's what's up. Not quite of sea life, you know, we're not going to take pictures of fish and crabs and sharks. We're taking pictures of dudes. And uh, these dudes are going to be giving me an upgrade. Can't believe Booker DeWitt made all this mess. Is he Cassandra? All right, so now that I've taken pictures of all the dudes, uh, I got an upgrade. It's gonna make me slightly faster. It's called the sports boost. I think it like straight up just increases movement speed. Uh, yeah, normally this level casually is probably one of the worst levels. Uh, you have to like solve the poison. You have to get a bunch of ingredients, make an antidote. Uh, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna kill that guy. And um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to this bench. And now I'm going to jump on this. All right, so by jumping on this, I'm now going to save the game. Uh, so strangely enough, the trigger for poison is also based on height. So if you can jump over it, as you can see right now. Oh no, the poison! I poisoned all of Rapture. Well, good thing we're not in the room. Say goodbye to the poison, we're leaving it. By the way, in practice, I never got that first try. I got that first try now. Probably because I messed up uh, <laughs> Medical Pavilion horribly. Anyway, there we go. Now we're in Fort Frolic, the next level. Again, a blink and you miss it. You're Cassandra. Have you played RE8? Go look on the run. Thank you. All right, and now it's time for the coolest guy in the game, Sander Cohen. He's the artist. An absolute artist. Chat, do you know that squids are the artists of the sea? They use ink. I don't think that fact is at all accurate. If you tell that to a scientist, they will not be happy with that. Uh, they'll probably laugh, but they'll probably not take you seriously. Anyway, going back to the actual game for a second, uh, we're now going to be doing another glitch. Oh no, the bathysphere is gone. I can't believe they've taken it away. I messed up the jump too. You know what, let's just reload that. All right, I'm gonna jump on the rail. Oh no, the bathysphere is gone. Whatever will I do? So I'm going to look up here and there is going to be the switch. It's normally my best part. There it is, right there. 
Okay, now we're halfway through the game. You skip the whole area. So, the reason why that works, the bad spirit doesn't actually disappear. The reason why is because, well, you still have the loading screen there. It's invisible, and you can touch the switch to bring you to the next level, and you can skip the whole level. All right, now time for a level that's kind of a bit more playing it straight. This is Hephaestus. Hephaestus, I want to say, is probably one of those challenging levels. It's not the hardest, I don't think, but it's one of those levels that, at this point in the speedrun, like, you've skipped a bunch of levels, and now you have to play a level straight again. So it's going to be taking that time to where you're going to have to use everything you learned while playing to kind of do the game. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to go for a cool jump. It saves, like, a second. I landed it. Fresh. Look at that. Cool jump. Yeah, I did Haunting Ground a few, uh, a couple GDQs back. I am indeed that guy. I also did Night Trap and Night Cry. I ran a lot of games with the word Night in it. Anyway, another skip right now. I play one tape, I play the other tape. Uh, that tape kind of teaches you how to break open the door using the EMP. However, I use this tape to skip that, so this event immediately starts. Correct. Uh, the Bathster just had an invisibility cloak. So what's going to happen now is a couple of dudes are going to be breaking this open. We don't want that to happen. So I'm going to throw this and just pop. Uh, and then we're going to kill. I double tapped. I don't know why I double tapped. And then... Dead. I don't want these guys being alive. They're going to get in the way later and they'll be annoying to me. You're also massive under level. Tell you are under level. Normally at this point in the game, you'd have a lot more plasmids, you'd have a lot more resources. Uh, I have nothing, so I'm kind of just been playing normally. I have a lot of health kits. Uh, also, time to learn a new trick. Uh, I kind of whipped it, but that's okay. Uh, you can kind of notice it right here. This is called pump canceling. Uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to fire guns really fast, as you can see. Uh, that's because I am swapping back and forth between plasmid and gun and doing that i can actually remove the downtime between gunshots so what looks proper is probably going to be like this save nice and easy uh and then dead big daddy is dead i need him i need both their bodies so why did i murder that little girl's family uh the reason why we did that is because i need four dead big daddies the run's going good those big daddies are going to be used to make a bomb you know standard things we're gonna learn how to assemble the bomb now. There's already two dead body uh, dead bodies on the map. Oh, not that one. Uh, there we go. Wait. There we go. There we go. Took me a few tapes there. So uh, the pump canceling is gonna be nice, and we have. Wow, you didn't die. Now you're dead. Also, earlier with Peach, I actually grabbed something called the hack tool. Uh, I'm gonna be able to use the auto hack here to instantly open the store. It is slightly faster than inputting a code, because inputting a code would take slightly longer. Uh, now as well, I'm going to be able to grab that, and I'm going to die in this corner. This level is going to be really cool, because there's one root point, and that root point is going to allow me to get all the supplies I need. Why would I walk back when I can just get up here? Now, I don't really care about my health, because I want to die yet again. This time what's going to happen is I'm going to start uh, firing myself while I'm walking. I don't want to be totally dead because there's a nice way of doing this, which is going to be uh, lighting a couple fires right here. So now, once I touch this, I can just die. And now we go all the way back. That's two, um, two of them already. We only need a couple more big daddies. I actually already got three big daddies. One more big daddy. And it's really nice that it's all kind of rooted into one area. Because then I can just go here. Also, is use of the word dive considered a pun? Because we're going to be diving on in. Here. I count it. We have to dive back down. And we have our final big daddy. No, this is the first run of the night. See, it's fun. I actually get to say this as the showrunner. This is straight up the first run of the night. We'll have two more runs after this. A lot of great runners. Anyway, I'm going to be doing uh, some damage abuse. I want to get rid of the 0% health. Because on uh, any percent, there's going to be a little bit of leeway. Uh, the game naturally gives you, hey, you're on like 1% health. You have a little bit more time of survival if you want to heal. Uh, so I want to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to use these machine gun rounds to launch myself. I do not, Pepito. First try. So I jump up here. I'm going to jump right here. And then we're going to make a leap of faith. Plunge into the deep, and... Alright, that's the whole level. 
I'm gonna die yet again, and now we're back up here. Because the end of the level is where we started. Also, this little girl is sad. She's upset that I made a fish pump. Oh yeah, fun, another fun ocean fact. Did you know that most of the Earth's oxygen comes from plankton? So the ocean's important. Yeah, I run over a hundred different games. Uh, all of them horror games. They're fun. I like the spooky genre. I think it's a very fun area to go into. Some games I'm decent at, some games I am absolutely terrible. But that's kind of the fun of speedrunning. You can have a nice wide uh, plethora of things. All right, now it's time for one of my favorite sections of the game. God, I keep messing that up. There we go. A oh, I like that pun. That's a fun one. A dive bar. All right, time to... Do I have one? I don't have a pun for that. Anyway, what's going to happen now is I am actually going to play uh, a tape. Remember how earlier I mentioned that certain tapes will prolong things? So I play all that matters to me. That's going to buy me some time because there's an invisible wall here. Normally you need some dialogue and then it'll open the door for you. I uh, don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to jump on top of the vending machine and I'm going to pass the invisible wall because it's like a... You know, like those like things you can easily hop over if you just do it? I can just do that. So I do that. And now we can make our way forward. Uh, the game didn't expect that. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to play another tape, uh, an optional tape, and that is going to end up skipping that dialogue. Now I'm going to play All That Matters to Me again, the story tape. That's going to continue the story tapes, and I'm going to be able to be right here. Now I'm going to play an optional tape, and that's going to kick me back to Hephaestus, the last level. Why am I doing this? Andrew Ryan gives a nine-minute speech. It's long. It's nine minutes. That's long. I'm skipping this. So, part one has just been skipped. What I did there is I activated his speech and I immediately left the level. In doing so, I'm now going to be able to re-enter the level and part one will be considered done. It's going to be faster to just straight up do this. But now part two is going to happen and it's going to get a little bit weirder. We're going to be doing a few more things here. Do I like the Police Academy films? I think they are okay. There's some cool sound effects. And now, I'm going to take Napalm. And we are going to be able to jump over a wall using this. Because Andrew Ryan put up a wall to prevent us from leaving. You're not allowed to leave. So, check this out. Uh, there's the wall this time, and now we have the napalm. Uh, let's actually just knock this back a little bit. You know, that was actually a lot cleaner than it should have been. All right, and let's see, and leap. Not first try. Why do I talk so much? It's a personality quirk. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna be doing the save and load trick again. This is gonna break the cutscene, and I'm gonna be able to move. And Stop. now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay attention to him. He's just gonna you be chilling. And now we get to have the key to Rapture. It was all in us the whole time. Oh, it didn't play. <laughs> that makes it weirder. That makes it a lot weirder. Uh, that's never happened before. <laughs> oh, it muted. <laughs> What's the difficulty? Any percent. Well, the game bugged out. <laughs> I gotta say, so I uh, put in the scene for Bachman's High because I wanted Bachman's High to play music and it's a fun Easter egg you can throw in by, um, you know, changing the files. Uh, for some reason it didn't play. Hold on, hold on, I want Bach... Hold on, hold on. I heard Bachman's High, why didn't it play? Wait. <laughs> why didn't that play? Familiar phrase. Yeah, it just... It just broke. Wow, that's... I have no idea what happened. Can I say, uh, that's never happened before? Now this joke again? Okay, I didn't plan this joke. I accidentally left it in. Meaning, I haven't really changed the file since I last touched Bioshock. I got it. Except this time, I guess it did change, because, uh... Well... It didn't play. 
All right. However, I do get to show a fun little quirk here because Andrew Ryan is uh, normally doing a whole dialogue right now, but um, we don't have to watch him. Uh, we're supposed to escape right now. So what's going to happen is he's just going to die to thin air. One might say he's under a lot of pressure right now. So look at that. It didn't work last night. I don't know how it worked today. Frost retry. I thought it would fix. Apparently not. Well, no, the audio worked last night on the same thing. I was practicing this last night and it worked. Also, I get to shout out my own stream for once. I'm McDysis, E C D Y C I S. I do a lot of spooky games and I also run this show. I don't get to do that one very often, so. Welcome back, child. Welcome Either way, I don't know why that didn't work. Yes, next will be Bioshock 2 and then it'll be Soma. Hey! I need to be on the other end of that this time. Alright. So now we're in the orphanage. We've been saved. The reason why we actually wanted to go for the good ending is because this line of dialogue that she's giving us is shorter. The wait time here is shorter. I think we just get less of it. So it's better to be good people. Also, we steal her candy. Better to be good people and then we take a little girl's candy. My understanding, Bakumatai isn't DMCA. Apparently, that was just straight up an original song made for Yakuza. I do a lot of research on that. It's really weird. Excuse Apparently, Bakumatai was not an actual song. It was made Doctor, for Yakuza. For All the games I mentioned will be tonight. Today is Speedruns from the Crypt. We are a bi weekly horror show, which means every other week. It's weird because I learned bi weekly apparently can mean twice a week or every two weeks, which is really, really oh, weird. Sweet. We're every two weeks. And we had to do a different... Wait, really? Semi-weekly is the... Oh. Well, why not call... Why... Oh. Well, I guess it makes sense. Either way, bi-weekly is... Oh, hey, I jumped on her head. I didn't get that in practice. We're doing good today. Did I run Amnesia? I have ran Amnesia. I'm not very good at Amnesia. I think I'm actually last place because I'm terrible at that game. Uh, but I have ran it. It's a lot of out-of-bounds and glitching, and it is an absolute pain to learn. Fun! Anyway, the moral of the story from what we learned from that last chapter is if you don't know the song Bakumatai, you should know Bakumatai. It's a great song. Uh -huh. All right, so we're going to be doing the glitch we did again. So from what you remember, in the last level, I was able to activate the door and immediately leave back to Hephaestus. Um, the next level we're going to do is me called the uh, Apollo Square. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play another tape. Uh, it's going to be Say Hi to Ryan. That's one of the longest tapes in the game. I'm going to chain together story dialogue. And in doing so, uh, I'm going to be able to go do all the requirements of this level and then launch back to the exit. Which are the three games I best at speedrunning? Probably Clock Tower, Dead Rising, and Silent Hill 2, if my guesses are. Um, my favorite is probably Clock Tower or Dead Rising. I'm really, um, those are like my specialties. Um, I think my most impressive feat was I have been the Clock Tower world record holder for about four years now. And it's been undisputed. Okay. So, playing that tape is a bit weird because I'm playing an optional tape. Uh, I play another optional tape to skip it, and then that skips as well using a mandatory one. No, I'm not gonna be the Bioshock 2 runner. I don't like to, like, I like to run games, but I don't like to, um, abuse that too much. I like to showcase a good variety of runners, uh, because there's a lot of fun people in the horror community. I just, for Bioshock, I'm decently reliable doing this game, so it all works out. Favorite color? Blue or purple these days. It's nice. Oh, the ones I'm doing. I'm only doing one. I'm only doing one game. And I only run this game. I don't do the other two games. I know the other two games. But yeah, there's going to be other runners, and they're going to be very talented runners, and we'll get to know them once we get to that point. Uh, for, this for this game, it's me. The next two will not be me. You know, Clock Tower, it's a game with scissors. Good luck with that one. Hey, if you want to beat my time, go for it. Currently, I think there's a Japanese owner who might be my clock tower time. Uh, outside that, uh, a lot of people have tried, I'm going to say it right now. Also, it's on the Super Famicom. Do you know what's next? Bioshock 2. Bioshock 2 is next. 
Yes, Bioshock is marketed as a horror game. It's based off System Shock. And System Shock is also a horror game. Also, my favorite part is showing off imagery in this game that's obviously meant to be horror. Uh, the one guy who has three crucified bodies in his office, or, you know, the intro of the game where you see a guy get eviscerated in front of you while you're defenseless. Also, these dudes. It's also kind of a bit of an RPG, so we do power up, but... What's the difficulty? Most speedruns will probably be on any percent, which is going to be the easiest difficulty. I like any percent in this game because any percent does a nice, uh, a nice thing, and that is with Bioshock. You may remember there's actually, God, I was with that. Bioshock's a bit of a weird one because Bioshock, on all honesty, the gunplay hasn't aged me amazingly. Uh, the gunplay in this game. Um, you know, you can't really scope, there's not a lot, it's not really that advanced, and a lot of people kind of attribute the story being the main thing in this game that they like, and not the gunplay. I like the gunplay, but any percent actually makes it a lot more fun, because it's a lot more uh, quick-paced, and there's less bullet sponging. Anyway, now I have the Watt 192, I'm no longer on RNG Plasmids mode. Uh, I'm going to be able to just die. The aesthetic? No, the intro cutscene in this game shows someone get eviscerated in front of you and then you're worried you're going to die. That's horror. The big daddies are horror. This game is definitely played as a horror game. Nope, we only, we're not getting more plasmids. So that's not the plasmids actually, that's the lot 192. And that's kind of the cure to the mind control render. Um, the thing is though, it RNGs your plasmids. So you always get winter blast and you always get um, target dummy. So, we don't have those anymore back on Incinerate and Telekinesis, but I guess we do technically have them temporarily, but not totally. I'll definitely say that this is marketed as a horror game and it was intended to be a horror game. Intent plays a powerful thing in horror. Certain games that you don't expect to be horror are always horror. Also, say hello to this gentleman. He's gonna be chilling, and now he's dead. Fire kills people. Oof. Bioshock 2 is way scary, and we'll be seeing that later. Also, Bioshock 2 has, like, the big sisters, and they're terrifying. Why do I die intentionally? That's gonna allow me to revive in Vita Chambers. Vita Chambers are going to, uh, like, what? For instance, like, there's one over there. If I die in here, I could die in here, but I didn't really do that strat, because honestly, it's a bit... I don't like it as much. But you can end up uh, going to different areas much faster by dying, because I'll just zoom you instead of having to walk back. All right, so now we're going to be entering probably one of my favorite speedrun tricks in any game I've ever played in my life. This is called Last Chance Kid. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy the run. Last Chance Kid is going to be a bit weird. Yeah, my bones crack a lot. I get some good neck cracks in there. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go right about here and I'm going to aim at this thing. And now we're gonna move forward. So, this point in the game, normally you're supposed to, oh, you're gonna find out why. You're supposed to get a costume and become the big daddy. Uh, however, you can do a glitch that's going to allow us to bypass this whole section. Maybe, I'm gonna go for it. Oh, close. You can see why it's called Last Chance Kid. That one was really bad. Hold on. No! Oh, that's fine. I fat fingered the wrong button. <laughs> oh, that's okay. If I go over overrest of my own show, what do I have to do? I don't know. I'll cry myself to sleep. That sounds like a reasonable answer. Banned for five minutes for my own show. Not allowed to talk for five minutes. You know, the break period. All right, we'll be fine though. That's really not that bad because the intro's right here. Daddy skip? Yeah, we're skipping the big daddy costume. It was, I mean, it was the last chance kid. That was the reason why he said last chance kid. Watch, now we're gonna get on first chance, kid. All 
right, this time. Second chance, kid. Last chance, kid. Hey, look at that one. Look at that one. First try. And now he's T-posing. You see? We're fine. First chance, kid. We got first try on that time. Awesome. We're probably going to be fun. It was not the last chance. It was the second chance. All right, so now we wear a big daddy costume that I definitely gathered and I didn't skip the whole level. We're gonna do some little sister manipulation. So now we're the big daddy and we can actually spawn in the little sisters by whacking these things, their houses. Uh, I'm gonna do some uh, AI manip. She's gonna run there. I'm gonna start running forward. By doing this, uh, she should hopefully run the whole time. Also, like time for Bioshock. World record for Bioshock uses an in-game timer and I think it's around like, actually, I don't even remember anymore. It might have gone down. Uh, I want to say it's under 40 minutes. Like, I want to say 39, but it might have gone lower. Anyway, she's going to be running the whole time, ideally. Now, is this RNG? No, this section's entirely manipulation. Uh, the only thing that will go bad is that if I get hit or if she gets hit, her AI can break, and then she'll be unpredictable. However, as long as I don't, um, you know, mess up too badly, we should be fine. And you'll see she's running the whole time. All right, well, I used a proximity mine, but it didn't matter. Are you, are you good there? Are you good there? We're not fighting. There she is. She's trying her best. So once again, telekinesis is going to be very imperative in this whole section. She's running, she's doing her job. And now we're actually going to skip her little waiting portion by using dialogue. Uh, we're going to have to kill about, I want to say it's like five to six dudes per side. Um, there's going to be a bunch of splicers spawning in. They want to destroy the little sister to take her at them. And they can spawn from either end. Normally, they try to lean towards wherever you're not looking, so you can kind of see me jumping back and forth between the two sides. However, ultimately, it is RNG based on how they'll spawn. Uh, each wave ends once you kill the spider splicer. I think that was actually the spider splicer. Yep. Once you kill the spider splicer, she'll be ready to go. That's actually the good way of knowing here. It's not 38.57. So what, I thought it was 39, but I didn't want to say 39. But yeah, the spider splicer is actually really important. Cool fact about this part too, uh, the enemies actually won't attack you. They'll only attack the little sister, which is kind of messed up that they only want to kill her. What are you up to? Oh my god, she's walking! She's under a lot of pressure, so now she's walking. This entire section is up to her. Don't be a slow We're on the original version of the game. This is how it looked back in 2007. Your rose-tinted goggles has deceived you. This is how video games looked back in 2007. They're less beautiful than you remember. And we have to play on lower graphics as well, because uh, I need good FPS to do a lot of the flings. Anyway, I guess now we're waiting. Uh, she's gonna, hurry, she's telling us to hurry, not knowing uh, this is all based on her. Well, she's definitely trying her best. Taking a real stroll. She's under no pressure at all here. Oh, she's so mean too. She'll tell you don't be slow. Meanwhile, she's like not even moving the whole time. Anyway, I laid mines over there because once again, they can spawn from either side. Um, if I wait here, I can actually look around the corner while they're arriving and um, I can get them early, as you can see here. Uh, I lay the mines though because they spawn on the other side. I want to make sure I'm prepared. Come on. Where are we at? Wait, who's? Oh, she's moving. What the? Oh, wow. I didn't know she was moving. When do I? Oh, I mean. All right, time for. A... She's running again. All right, she's making the moves. I don't know what got into her, but it worked out. Yeah, she's having her union break. Huh? She's having her mandatory break. So what's gonna happen now is her running can be a bit wonky if you're not careful. What you want to do is you want to jump late and then you're going to be able to run all the way at the end. Uh, if she walks here, that can be a death sentence because she can get shot. Um, normally, you do not want children to be shot. That is considered a bad move. 
So now that she's through the door, we'll be fine. There's a turret there, and there's another one there. One's rocket, one's bullets. The stray bullets can hit her. She's back on the run. She, you know, she was just, she was just playing up an act. She was just joshing you, Chad. There's gonna be three spider splicers in the water. I'm going to kill all of them. And now, uh, she's still running. She's doing really good. Wait, no you're not. Don't run into me, what are you doing? Cut that out. She trapped me in the corner. All right, now I know what's up. <laughs> There's the, the turret hitter, okay. I was wondering, why, why was she trapped me in the corner? I think they call that, uh, wait, do we have an ocean term for that? Marooned? That's more of a pirate term than an ocean term. Anyway, she's making it here now. Okay, let's see. The splash is only spawning in, wow, she didn't respawn there. The three sides. Ideally, I want them to spawn on the left so I can easily kill them. The right's kind of annoying, his little sister's in the way, and then the middle is kind of hard to hit with these bars here. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm actually out of tele- wow. That's neat. Uh, but, oh, well, let's just kill. She heard us. She knew we needed to run. All right, she's moving now. All right, she's actually doing a great job. Look at her go. Big congratulations to her. And to you, chat. She's the real speedrunner. All right, so we should be fine. So if I pass this line, the big daddy's gonna spawn in for a final fight here. I want her to go forward. And now, big daddy, also known as large father, or big papa. Here he is. So he's just gonna run into every one of the traps to lay down for him. And now he's dead. Say goodbye to large father. And now at this point in the game, uh, I seem to let her go to the um, the end. It should be nice and good. That was the auto scroller, and we're gonna give her a gift. You see, I, um, he was here in chat earlier. But I actually learned about this cat from Blood Thunder. Apparently, it exists. It's a dead cat. I actually didn't know it was there. I don't know why it's there, but we're gonna give her a present for all her hard work. She gets a cat. Alone in the crawling darkness. Take your cat. Take your take your cat. She doesn't want a cat. She tried. All right. Anyway, we're now approaching the end of the game. Hey, I'm just gonna say the one-hour estimate was the move. This run went, you know, had some flaws, but it was actually pretty good. Uh, we are nearing the end of the run, so I do hope they've all enjoyed this one so far. The final fight's really straightforward. It's me. It's me quick. And you'll see how it goes. And hopefully, you've all had a good time, chat. Hopefully you've learned a lot of ocean facts this week. No, this is, uh, I think, any percent or easy. Normally, most speedruns will be done on easy if you play any game whatsoever. Unless it says otherwise, usually it will be the standard easiest. What did I think of Infinite? It was okay. All right, so this fight, Fontaine, the way it's going to work is normally in the casual game, it kind of sucks. As a speedrun, though, it's really tight because I can just drop a bunch of uh, grenades right there. I drop three. What's going to happen is the moment he spawns in, he should land on all three of them. Phase one. Phase two. Time comes up on the final uh, needle. Uh, so, not this needle, but the next needle. I reload my frags, and now we're going to pump cancel until he dies. I do not know if you can do a last chance get on remastered. Alright, time ends... now. GG! 8649? See, that's underestimate. I knew the one hour. See, the one hour is smart. I said one hour. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, he's uh not quite dead, but you'll see what happens to him. Dreamed up, and I tattooed inside your head. Yeah, our show goes pretty late. We have the uh, speedruns in the crypt, late night horror hours. So, 
We go late because all our games are spooky. Anyway, um, they just murder him. Straight up. It's like being stabbed by a bunch of swordfish. Anyway, he's dead, and that's a GG. I hope that you've all enjoyed uh, the showing of Bioshock 1 on Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, I've been your host, and... Wait, it's not playing! <laughs> so all the, all the story dialogue just broke. I have no idea what happened. The Bakuma Tai came back. What did you do instead? You saved what I've come to expect. Oh my god. Well, uh, I was kind of expecting audio. <laughs> but um, I don't know what happened to the movies. Uh, it broke. <laughs> Well, normally this is a really sweet ending, like it's uh, dubbed over with the nice uh, Tenenbaum lady, but uh, do an improv voice, or you never said, but I think I know, a family. Uh, well, there you go. You can just imagine Baku Matai is playing and that's the that's the same thing. Yeah, oh God, I'm wondering what happened. Do I actually have a, s hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna try one thing really quick before we go to the next run, since I did go a little bit underestimate. I wanna try one thing. I am a little, Wait a minute. No, no, that should make a difference. I want to try something here. I want to try one thing. So I wonder if rebooting the game will fix that, because I do have uh, this one. Hold on, I'm really curious. Stop, would you kindly? Hold on. Would you kindly? I'm curious now. I'm curious. Familiar phrase. No, it just broke. Okay. All right, broke. I'm cool with that. Anyway, uh, let me just reboot the game. That's been Bioshock. Hope you all enjoyed it. I've been your runner, Rick Dysis. Uh, if you did like that, um, you can check me out at twitch.tv um, slash Dysis, E-C-D-Y-C-I-S. I do a lot of horror games. I run over a hundred of them. Also, I run this show. So my I have a lot of horror knowledge and all that. So, I do hope that you all enjoyed it, and I do hope you all enjoy the rest of the show. We have a lot of fun games for you. And it should be a good time. Uh, let me just see really quick. Um, before we do go, though, we're going to take a quick... Before we go to the next game, we're going to take a quick wellness break. This is going to be a time to stand up, stretch, touch your toes, do what you need. Uh, we're going to be right back. Uh, just as a heads up, though, before we go, uh, this week is Ocean Week, and if you would like to support the MBA Aquarium, you can type uh, exclamation mark MBA Donate and MBA store, exclamation mark, MBA store and chat. See more information on the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We're gonna be right back really quick with Bioshock 2. Be right back. And we are back. I hope you all enjoyed the last Bioshock run. Uh, you know, everyone loves Bioshock 1, and I, whenever I play it, I always hear only the best things about the sequel, Bioshock 2. Everyone always says how great the game is, how cool it is, like everything. I only ever hear positive things. So, how fitting would it be to further submerge ourselves into the Bioshock series and dive into the sequel to the first game, Bioshock 2? Um, let's see, do I know any other ocean words there? We had dive we had submerge so let's float on on to the next game i think that one works <laughs> uh we're gonna be having bioshock 2 with our runner uh benedictator uh and yeah feel free to uh take it away all right hello everybody benedictator here pretty excited to be here excited to run some bioshock 2 um yeah I love the Bioshock games. I run all the Bioshock games, and I run uh, Half-Life games uh, really poorly. The Half-Life games I run really poorly, but I do run them. Uh, but Bioshock, Bioshock is, that's my thing. Um, but anyways, so Bioshock 1's a fun game, obviously, you saw, but Bioshock 2, I don't know, it might be my favorite to run out of all the Bioshocks. You get the drill dash, you get to zoom around. It's got some kind of annoying skips that we'll get into, but it really is a lot of fun to play. And Minerva's Den, mwah, just that, that's... A fun run but anyways that's not what we're doing today i'll go ahead and uh get ourselves set up here so this is where we're gonna go ahead and start i'll go ahead and give you a countdown go three two one run 
All right. So we get our drill, but we don't get to do the drill dash quite yet. We get that after a couple levels. So we'll start cruising around here. Bust our way through that. All right. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the Bioshock games are super fun. I feel like they have a really, uh, Bioshock 1 and 2 at least, have like a really friendly learning curve. Bioshock Infinite can be a little more annoying to run, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, so first things first, we're gonna run up there and grab that audio diary that I just grabbed. And we get to do a weird thing. There's gonna be a little cutscene, but we can play the audio diary right when this cutscene starts, and it'll skip past the cutscene. And that like, I don't know, for some reason we grab, grab that plasma and it bounces us into the wall, but no biggie. <laughs> My hair is great, thank you. The blue makes me go fast like Sonic. It helps with my speed runs. Also, hello chat. I hope you all are doing well today. All right. Um, yeah, this game's a lot of fun, but I will tell you, Eleanor is is pretty widely hated <laughs> among the uh, speedrun uh, community. And that has to do with uh, specifically the um, outer Persephone level where she just talks at you. It's kind of in an annoying fashion, but we'll get that uh, get to that later on towards the end of the run. But yeah, all right. So we got our plasma here, our electro bolt. We're gonna try to electrocute this panel. Hopefully, this splicer stays out of our way. Yeah, we got it. If she sometimes she likes to like body block you, and you lose like a second or two. It's not like a big deal, but whatever. So this door is gonna open, but like it only opens if you're kind of like standing and looking in the right spot and if you're not then it can be yeah there we go we got it right if you're not like standing and looking in the right spot that door just won't open and it can be kind of annoying if you don't know what you're doing but i got it point 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 you like to jump in the water you move a little faster you jump in the water all right train station all right and now this is one of those like you're meant to lose fights, so we just let this big sister beat up on us for a little while. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing now. Hi, little sister. Oh, hey there. So you're saying it's kind of a uh, a sink or swim kind of deal? <laughs> that's that's right. Oh God, yes, that is exactly correct. See, now that I'm now that I'm not running, I get to think you get about the ones where I say that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Actually, I'm a big it fan. It can really go either way. I'm, I've been booed for it a lot. I'm a fan of puns, so I appreciate it. You're fun. All right, so we're, I think it helps. I don't know, maybe maybe this is just a lie, but I think it helps if we get as close to zero health. You can't die here. You, you can get close to dying, but you can't actually die here. But I think if we're at lower, lower health, that helps us go faster. All right, now that she's screaming, we're ready to move on. Okay, and that is the big sister. We'll, we'll run into her later on in the run too, but she's a lot easier when we run into her later. Okay, so there's a little trick here. This is a weird little trick that saves like maybe a second or two. This, this room is gonna flood in a second, and I'm gonna hop over here to this pillar to my left, and I'm gonna stare at it. And if I stare at it the right way, we'll sort of spawn in a better location once this room floods. We wanna stare at those rocks until it goes upside down. Oh, it looked like it put me in the right spot. Happy day. Yes, it did. So usually, if you don't do it, it takes three bounces to get out of the water. We can get out of there in two, because we're super speedy. Huh. It's kind of like a weird, like it only saves like a second or two, but hey, hey, still counts. You can still reach the train station. Find me there. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Like I say, we bounce underwater. And this little thing, we bounce over that plant, but if you jump into that plant weird, it'll like, totally stop your forward momentum, so you just gotta make sure you time it right so so you don't jump into it the wrong way. Other than that, we'll just hop around. You like two over one? Bio one is a better story? Yeah, bio one, I would agree, has uh, a better story, but bio two, I also think has, has a, personally, I think it has better gameplay. The drill arm is awesome, and, and, in my opinion, the hacking in Bioshock 2 is way better. The hacking little mini game in Bioshock 1 is okay, but it, it gets old after a while. Like if, if you play it casually and you hack a whole bunch, that little mini game gets kind of annoying, at least in my opinion. All right, so that's our first little level. Now we're gonna get to the audio, like the full level audio diary skips. And these are like frame, frame perfect tricks. So hopefully I get it first try. If not, I'll just have to restart the level a couple times till I get it right. 
We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we will. So, this is a quick question. What ended up getting you into Bioshock speedrunning? Uh... It was, um... I don't know. It was... I, I decided to start speedrunning. Oh, this stupid audio diary. Give me just a second and I will answer that question. No worries. These, these diary skips. I got it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I don't know. When I started, I, it was just the game I was playing when I decided that I wanted to start speedrunning. Um, I initially was actually watching, like, uh, Super Mario, uh, Super Mario Sunshine, just Mario Sunshine, one of those two. Uh, I was watching Mario Sunshine speedruns, and I was like, this looks like a cool thing, and I want to do it, and I just happened to be playing Bioshock at the time, so I was like, well, I guess I'll just speedrun that game. Oh, amazing. I missed that. There we go. Derp. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, that's what got me into it, and I really enjoyed it, and I just decided to keep going with it. Um... Yeah, and Bioshock 1 and 2 I do pretty decent. I do Bioshock Infinite as well, but that's that game I also am not amazing at. Um, and then, like I say, Half-Life I also do, but that's that's like the least of my speedruns. It's it's a great speedrun, but it is very difficult, and I am not that good at it. Uh, I know so, the feeling all too well. <laughs> yeah. This is something I like to do. Definitely not, not a thing you have to do, but we got a little time here. I like to draw a smiley face. And I like to give him a cool, a cool hat. It is a happy day. It is. It's always a happy day in Rapture. Except when it isn't. Alright, so now I, I'm gonna hit you with the, the, the hard-hitting question. Are you ready? I'm ready for it. I was born ready. Alright, so I did I did mention this before we end up starting the run, Chad. I did mention this one. Alright, Ben. What is your favorite marine life creature? Okay, well, I've got two answers. I didn't say fish this time, just to say, really, I didn't say fish, because, uh, as we did learn, there's more than just <laughs> fish in the ocean. Uh, this is I, true. I realized I said fish earlier. I mean, I still like the eel myself, but, uh, the what is cool. your favorite marine life creature? Let's go with that. And I'll ask the same question to Chad as well. What is your favorite marine life creature? My, uh, that question yet. my, my silly answer is a merman, except the bottom half <laughs> is human and the top half is fish with some, some hot hot man legs. Uh, but my, re answer. my real answer is the uh, the octopus. I feel like maybe you had mentioned the Ooh. octopus earlier, but they are they're a fascinating smart. creature. They're smart. They're really they can, smart. They're, they're really weird with their tentacles. Like, they can open jars from the inside with their tentacles. They're cool. They're just cool little creatures. Really quick, you ever heard the story of the one octopus that I think would, uh, like, he broke out of his cage <laughs> to, like, discipline his keepers and like because i guess it got fed during certain hours and he didn't get fed so he broke out got food <laughs> just so he could and then went back to his cage i do i know i know that story i am familiar with that and it's it's, it's me. that's like one of the reasons why i think they're just awesome they're so smart and like, yeah. clever they got the big brain they do they do yeah they're they're pretty neat i also feel like they'd be one of the most terrifying ones to run into underwater um, but they're they're also cool, <laughs> cool and terrifying. I wouldn't want to fight an octopus, is what I'm saying. Also, you mentioning merman for some reason reminds me of the hilarious fish. Uh, do you know it, it came out on the Sega Dreamcast? It is a video game called Sea Man, and they're like fish with people's faces on them, and they're the like oh. most terrifying thing to ever exist. Is that the one on the Dreamcast where it was like you were raising yeah, it's it or on whatever? the Dreamcast? <laughs> it's like. Video, like, you have to talk to them, and then, like, <laughs> Leonard Nimoy voices, like, the overture, what? and then the guy it? from Delhi Premonition. Yeah, Amazing. the intro, the guy from Delhi Premonition is there. I'm just saying, I think the Sea Man is a cool fish. That is incredible. Yeah, I, I actually forgot about that guy, but yes, I, I do now. Now that you mention it, I, I remember that terrifying little creature. <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> so we're gonna try to do something here if the game is nice to me. I'm gonna steal this guy's mask. Oh, perfect. The mask is a little bit wonky. I, I wish he was wearing a hat. The hat is easier. But we're going to drop this hat on top of our head and hope that this, or this mask rather, and we're going to scooch our way over to that edge. We're going to have this mask scooch us backwards and hopefully we don't lose it. All right, there we go. Like I say, the hat works better, but the mask should get it done. Um, and what this is going to do is at a certain height, this uh, elevator is going to have a ledge that kind of sticks out a little bit and it's going to shove us through the floor and we'll drop down and do a death warp and we'll respawn in the Vita chamber at the top of this area. It saves like a couple seconds, but it's a really, really funky trick. 
It's one of my favorite ones in the game. All right, we are, I'm pretty sure, in good position. So let's see what happens. Mask on head. I know, I wish we could actually, like, wear it, but but no no such luck. All right, let's see if I did it right. Is it going to stop me? Oh, no, apparently I didn't do it right. It didn't, oh, wait. Nope, no, we didn't. I was close. Almost got shoved through. I'm sorry, I couldn't show that. We, we were very close there. It would have respawned us in that Vita chamber right there, so it, it wouldn't have been, like, an, an uh, amazing time save or anything, but it's a cool trick. All right. So this upcoming fight is pretty scripted. Hopefully we do just fine in it after this little cutscene. You see, this is why I must fight All right. Sophia All right. She is using the new right. ones for, for something. Penenbaum from the first game. He looks a little different. More children will die for my a wee bit. And the rapture nightmare it will repeat forever. I like Tenenbaum as a character. She's kind of weird, but I like her. So there's a quick question for anyone who may have missed, um, I guess just the connection between these two games. Uh, so where does Bioshock 2 kind of leave us after playing the Bioshock 1? Like, where is it, uh, how does it connect or whatever? It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's not super connected in any way. It takes place, I believe, 10 years later. Um, but it just, it's, it kind of goes through your, uh, argument with this lady named Sophia Lamb and, and her uh, religious fanatics. Um, but there's not a whole lot of connections between Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. It's really weird. And then Bioshock Infinite almost almost ignores Bioshock 2 completely. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird. It's, as far as story goes, I feel like it's, it's like the forgotten child. There is, there is like a painting of Jack from Bioshock 1 and his like, his chain tattoos on his wrists. Um, but that's like, it mentions it like once in the game and that's oh, the only no, reference to the original the Bioshock in this game. You reminded me of my favorite ahead. fact about Bioshock 1. I'll really quick say, uh, say uh, you're gonna say something good for that first oh, and just same, later. Yep, we're doing another uh, audio diary skip, another one of those annoying full level ones. So hopefully we get it first try. This one we get to make a quick save just in case things go. Oh, I thought I had it first try. This one, this one can be a little annoying. Got it. Second try. Better than better than the first level. All right. Done with that. Go ahead with what you're gonna say. Well, before I get into that though, I'm actually curious. So, what do you mean by full level audio diary skip? Oh yeah, I guess I should explain that. So, in Bioshock One, you were doing you know your your normal diary skips where you would skip certain amounts of audio. Oh, um, right. In this one, we do these frame-perfect tricks at the very beginning of the level, and it skips all of the radio messages in the whole level. Um, so we just need to do one diary skip, and that just carries us through the whole level. And I believe this huh. one actually carries us through the next two levels as well. Um, but they're, like, way more annoying to do than than the uh, Bioshock one ones, just because they're frame-perfect. Or they're near frame-perfect. All right, so you ready for the dumb fact? And this blows a lot of people's minds as home of Bioshock 1. So, the protagonist of Bioshock 1 is three years old. <laughs> this is true. He's an actual three-year-old. Yeah. It's really trippy. The lore, like, they, they full-blown say he was uh, born at, like, 57 pounds. And then he became, like, a fully aged adult at three. Yep, they gave him some, some special aging genes or something. That's why, and that's why during the uh, cutscene at the end, he uh, dies at such a, um, he dies, like a he dies early, ass. yeah. Like the little sisters are, are only so old, but he's, he's like an old, old man. Uh, and that's why he's not in the following game. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right, all right. Fighting the big daddy. So we only have to fight so many big daddies. We, uh, and this is one of them. Hopefully this fight goes just fine. We'll see. Come on. Come on, guy. We fight him in the water if we can, because that uh, makes him take extra damage. And that was a pretty decent fight there. That didn't go too bad at all. All right. Here we go. So this this part coming up is really neat. So we're gonna we do there's this element in Bioshock 2 that was not there in Bioshock 1. We help the little sisters 
gather Adam from the corpses. So we have to like guard her as she's drawn blood from these corpses. Um, we don't do a whole lot of it in this game. We just do a little bit of it. But what we're going to do here is we are only going to electrobolt these bad guys. We're not even going to worry about um, killing them. In fact, we want them to stay alive. I'm not going to worry about that guy shooting me. Actually, it's really weird that there's a guy with a gun there. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened to me before. Uh, but it's, it's fine. Hey. Yeah, yeah. First, it's, it's one of those I've never seen this before is where it's actually not a big deal. Uh, but anybody that runs up to her, we're going to electrobolt them. So the reason we're doing this is during the next gathering sequence, if we don't kill anybody, um, there will be no splicers attacking us during the next gathering sequence. I, I think it has something to do with the amount of like character models that are the game is registering at one time or something like that. That's, that's like a guess, but all I know is that if we keep electrocuting them, there will not be splicers during the next gathering part. That this guy, this guy, he's really mad at me. Right, we should be done with that part. Grab this. I guess just a general question: If you got a melee enemy, would he just try to smack you the whole time, or like? No, he would go after the little sisters. So it's really weird that that guy's sitting there just shooting me. Usually you're safe right. in the corner there, and, and nobody nobody bothers you. So that was just kind of goofy. All right, all right. So we're on, almost to the next body, and you'll see what I mean. We can kill this person. We don't have to worry about her, and we can kill this guy in here. But after that, there should be no more splices. And this is, I think, like, the only time we're going to help the little sisters gather. Normally, we're not even going to worry about dealing with them. Also, right. really quick, I saw the question in chat. Uh, the little sisters are kind of explained in the first game as um, they found a drug called the Atom from different sea slugs at the bottom of the ocean. And then they found out that it really amplified on the gathering with the little girls. So there was kind of a whole orphanage ran by the character Tenenbaum, something like that. And then they kind of made this whole um, problem of them being Atom hungry and gathering. Uh, so they're kind of programmed by a mad scientist, so to speak. Yeah, that is basically, basically, they're like weird little vampire girls almost, because they suck yeah. blood and they, they don't die. Kind of creepy, kind of cool, then, but kind of um, creepy. The first game also kind of went more into this with, you can say, you can redeem them and kind of remove the atom from their body and, I guess, detox them, or you could uh, harvest the atom from their body. That is Which, correct. And that yeah, would be the best. <laughs> you can do that in this game, too. Um, but then there's just the added element of helping them um, harvest the bodies, so... Uh, so that, I guess actually, um, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that that is like if you're doing a casual playthrough, that is the one thing about this game that actually does get kind of monotonous is having to uh, deal with all the corpses while you're guarding her. So for the uh, the other question though, um, so does this game have the same multiple ending thing with the little sisters? It does. It does. Um, there is actually so. The original game has three endings. There is the good ending, the bad ending, and then there is a uh, kind of, oops, kind of a not very well-known neutral ending where I, I don't know what the combination is, but it's if you save and harvest a certain number of sisters, you get a neutral ending. It's literally the same script as the, the bad ending. It's just Tenenbaum says it in a sad voice. But anyway, so that's, that's Bioshock 1. This game has six different endings, or I think it might actually be nine. I think there might be a neutral ending as well, but it depends on whether you harvest or uh, save the little sisters. That depends on part of the ending. And then there are NPCs that you can either save or kill. And that, that determines the other part of, of the good or bad endings. So, I don't know. Kind of neat. Lots of different endings for this game. And we are going to harvest. We don't care about these little sisters. We don't need to save them. We harvest all sisters in this run. We are cold-blooded. We get the bad ending. All right, so we're gonna do a death warp here. We're gonna shoot that thing and hack it and lose life on purpose. Got it. Boom, oh, that was really smooth. Usually it doesn't go that smooth. Okay, we die in this specific corner because so we will instantly revive in this chamber without seeing the death animation. Usually you sort of see your soul travel to the Vita chamber, but if you die in certain spots in these games, you can skip that animation. Um, and here we meet my bae, Edna. I love her. You my bae. You my bae. 
He's kind of a meme in the Bioshock speedrun community, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we're going to get ready for another death warp coming up here after we get uh, our, our fire, our incinerate. Let's get out of here. There we go. Light that guy on fire so he doesn't follow us and deal damage to us. And if you look at the top, for some reason, the icons of the plasmids are all kitty wampus. They're like sideways. Let this guy do a little bit of damage to us and we'll zap him. We'll grab this uh, explodey barrel here. Quick. There we go. And now we're gonna fight the uh, big sister again. Actually, we're gonna run away from her for a second. She'll catch up to us, but we're just gonna run away from her. She's to, she's to our left at the moment. Uh, but I'm, I'm keeping this barrel with me because I want to use it to kill myself to do a death warp. We're gonna set it there and we're gonna grab that one. So we got extra damages. I'm gonna jump on top of this thing. There we go. Do some damage. All right, now I'm just gonna hope these splicers kill me faster than slower. Got it. So for, we want to die on top of this thing specifically because it brings us back to this Vita Chamber rather than a different Vita Chamber. It's kind of goofy, but that's the way it works. And we're going to melt that ice. Boom. We want to get rid of all our Eve so that we're at full Eve when we start this next fight. We're going to get to our Electro Bolt. So if we aim down at the floor and sit in this little corner, the big sister is going to spawn right in front of us in a little bit here. We also get to meet Sinclair. He's one of my favorite NPCs from this game. We're going places. I like him. He's your buddy. All right. He's like he's like your version of Atlas in this game, except he doesn't backstab you. He actually just is is kind of a good guy. Kinda. There we go. That's that level. Yeah, oh yeah, so we are playing on potato, as Proto says. We're playing on all all the low settings so that the game does not crash for us. Because that's how we do. I'm wondering, do any of the Bioshock games don't play on low settings? I know 1 and 2 definitely you need lower settings to play the game. Bioshock Infinite... I don't know about Infinite. It's the same, yeah, you play on, on low settings because there are some uh, tricks that are frame-dependent. So it's, it's all potato settings. So here's, here's the level where we're going to get our drill dash, which is, in my opinion, the best part of the speedrun. We just get a zoom all over the place. And I've also, so there's a certain part of the game where we're going to want um, to spam our uh, our use item or our interact with item button. Um, so we have, we have uh, that set to mouse scroll, which also actually helps when I'm looting bodies. So it has kind of a, a double use. To keep the train All right, open. let's keep going here. The security over We're gonna buy some plasmids and some tonics and stuff and things. She kicked me out of my Oop. own. We're gonna buy a plasmid slot. We are gonna get decoy, and then we're gonna get winter blast, and we are gonna get rid of telekinesis for winter blast. Telekinesis super OP in the original Bioshock, not as OP okay, in this game. You. It's we'll okay, but it's definitely not like the strongest plasmid like it is in the other game. I'm gonna do a quick save here just in case this uh, brute splicer decides to run away from me. Usually doesn't, but sometimes he can. We're gonna place this decoy right here to lure this brute splicer and get our ice ready. Boop, 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 boop. Got it. And once we uh, get around the corner here, we're gonna freeze this brute splicer in place so that we can take some photos of him. Play that Bioshock snap. Ooh, I'm kind of low health. Uh, Wait, so you're just gonna be frozen there the whole time? Yeah, so you can yeah, you can keep him frozen. Usually you have to like traverse way through the level. Oh, is he hiding on me? Oh there he is. Yeah, usually that guy. Usually you have to uh, traverse through a, a large part of the level in order to find him. But we can skip all that. Do some damage to him, get our drill dash, perfect. I'm gonna go over to this thing, lose some health. Alright, you guys can finish me off, please, and we'll do a death warp. All right. There's a door that won't open unless you death warp here. It's really strange, but again, that death warp allows it to happen. Zoom! Now we get to zoom all over the map. It's wonderful. I love it. It's my favorite part of this run. Zoom. Zoom. You can open doors with our decoy. Nice. Got it. Oh, 
Didn't get that one in time, that's all right. Let's refill our drill fuel. Got it. There we go, zoom. There we go, now we gotta go zoomy fast. All right, so I'm gonna keep this decoy up for a good amount of the game just so I can open doors early. Pretty useful. And if you drill dash just right, you can sort of like bend around corners once you get like a little better at it. Hi, Brute. Let's get past him. We gotta go meet Shrek in a little bit. We call her Shrek because she says this is her swamp, so that's fun. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I mentioned earlier, uh, apparently rivers and lakes can be underwater. Oh, there you go. Yeah, apparently swamps an, too. An underwater swamp. We get everything in the back. Let's see if we have the ghost chair. Oh, we do have the ghost chair. Look at, so she's sitting through the chair, in inside the chair. Her knees are in the chair. Usually she's actually like sitting in the chair, but, but we've got special spooky ghost chair today. Well, that's fun. We could say she was floating. Yeah. We're gonna grab that key. That's all we really care about. So this is one of the NPCs that you can either save or kill. We don't kill any of the NPCs in this game, in this run, just because it takes extra time. We don't have to worry about it. Um, so we'll, we'll be nice to the NPCs, uh, but we're gonna kill all the, the little sisters. So we'll get like a good variant of the bad ending. That's how that, that's how that works. Grab that key. Grace is unarmed for what it's worth. All right, we gotta heal up. If you don't heal up to full health, you'll actually die from this uh, from this fall, from that jump there. That's a big fall. It is. Yeah, we get um move past a large part of the level by doing that. Zooms, zooms. Oh, the sandbags block my movement. How mean. No monster alive turns the other cheek. No monster does that. A thinking man does that. And there we go with that level. All done. Not too bad. Some good drill dashes, some good zooms. We all float down here. Love that reference. All right. On to Siren Alley. Probably my least favorite level in this run. It just, I don't know. It's. Just has like a weird kind of grindy feel to it. It's it's okay. It's not horrible, but the other levels are more fun. Waiting for theater skip. Oh god. <laughs> Hi KPC. Hopefully it goes smooth. Okay, so speaking of that theater skip is coming up in uh Fontaine Futuristic. So it's it's not a tough trick to do, but if you do it wrong, then it suddenly becomes very difficult. So as long as you do it right, it's a piece of cake. I feel like that could be said about any trick, but it, it it's true though it's true for this it's just a little bit of platforming it's it's really not that difficult but if if you uh yeah if things don't go right it just quickly turns into a nightmare grab these sea slugs thank you sea slug one sea slug two and sea slug three thank you guys there we go you love four years strong i love four years strong too they're a good band. I don't know who mentioned them. Let's see. This game has it all. All right. Two more drill dashes. Zoom. I got him. Sometimes I miss him. I like it when it connects. All right. We'll freeze this guy here. Gather the family. I think Mother knows I'm helping you like There we go. She's accelerating my treatment. Don't give up on me. Take out that splicer. Do that. We'll hack this, hopefully, before it kills us. I am low on the health. That's kind of weird. Usually, I'm not super low on health like this. It should be fine. It's just kind of weird, that's all. Take care of that guy. I can go buy some health packs if I really need to. All right. We're going to research some of these uh, spider splicers here, and we're going to get a speed boost once our research gets high enough. We're basically just going to freeze these guys and let our turret 
deal with them mostly, unless I need to kill them early. And take care of that one quick, because the other one is going to drop in a second. Let's go. Where did that other one drop? Did it already drop and I didn't see it? Maybe. Go ahead, turret. Do your thing. We're just kind of like tearing them apart. Yep. Yep. Just let our buddy do the trick. It's teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. That it does. <laughs> There we go. We got all the research we need for that now. Nope, not what I meant to do. Did not mean to use that. All right, now we're gonna go do a little, a little bit of out of bounds action. We're not gonna go traveling anywhere. We just wanna find this enemy early. This brute splicer is gonna appear in front of us in a second. We'll get some research and, and take care of him real quick. They fixed this in the remastered version so you cannot climb up here. Any second now. I got my research done early. Come on, buddy. There we go. I was gonna say. There we go. I'm gonna get some supplies real quick. Real fuel and e pipes. I'll buy a couple of those. I have enough health for now. That was an unfortunate drill dash. If you drill dash wrong, it like stuns you like that. It's a sad feeling. I'm gonna grab that first aid kit just to be safe. Pardon me, guy. Each of you know, child of the lamb. Through Adam, our soul shall pass into her holy blood. Will be Zoom. Actually, I guess. Oh, oh go ahead. Question, actually. Um, how is it RNG on the drill fuel? Uh, no, it's it's mostly pretty scripted out. Um, oh, did I miss him. Oh wow. There we go. Yeah, it's mostly scripted out where it is. Um, we we buy our extra drill fuels in the same spots pretty much every time. That's at least a reliable thing. Although, depending how good you do your drills dashes, you know, you might need to spend a little extra drill fuel if, you, if you're messing them up. All right, we'll Makes toss sense. down a couple turrets here. We're going to get our ice ready, and we are going to smash this guy. Ooh, my health is a little higher than I wanted it to be. Well, or a little lower than I wanted it to be, rather. The opposite of a little higher. Normally, I would try to get down to pretty much zero health there, but if I wouldn't have healed myself, I'm pretty sure I would have died. We'll play it a little bit safe. Right, we're going to get our fire, and we are going to do a death warp here. Park, we've got a tiny window of opportunity to get you inside. I don't have much air Let's left, go. There. You make sure you're ready there we go. You throw that death warp, we'll get out of here and exit on another level. We get to do a, a pretty cool trick here coming up where we get to bring our drill out underwater. And we get to do zooms underwater, which is not what you're supposed to be able to do. We're tricky like that. We're tricky like that. Zoom. Your sin itself marches to meet you, beast. And its name is Legion. Man, I'm name. curious on this. I want to see how this is going to look here. Eleanor yeah, so this place will flood in, in just a little bit here, and then, yeah, once we get out of this level. Oh, thanks for body blocking me, guy. That was rude. Attaboy, sport. I think you're closing in on Simon's Zoom. All right. Temple. This thing will flood, then we'll get a get out of this level, and yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about with the drill underwater. It's a cool trick. We do it a few a few times in this run, but we do it we do it like a special way this way. We, we do it like we take advantage of the underwater section in a certain way this this level, and then like we do it a different way in, in a future level by using a a decoy um, plasmid or the scout plasmid rather. So what's going to allow the drill to work on the water? For some reason, it lets you pull your weapon out in this little chamber here. And then if we just do a drill dash in the chamber, we can we can do zooms underwater. I don't know why that's a thing, but it is. <laughs> Zoom. Very nice. It's a real, uh, it's a real jet stream. 
Yes, yes it is. I that was excellent. I think that's a water term. I hope it is. I'm pretty I sure think it is. I think I think you're right. You know, if that's in the air, I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. I actually just kinda thought about that. I don't actually know. Hold on, hold on. Let's find out. I'm pretty sure I feel like you're right. I'm pretty sure you are. Wait, it's an air current! Oh no, oh no. There are there are like <laughs> no. there is like the underwater equ equivalent of that, but I'm not sure what it's called then. Oh that's sad. I I was pretty happy with that pun. That was a good one. That was I would call that a turbo pun. All right. Oh. <laughs> it was a good try. It was. So we're gonna get um another audio diary skip coming up here later on in this level. Kind of considered to probably be the most annoying audio diary skip, although I usually don't have too much trouble with it. But watch watch me have like a huge amount of trouble with it since I said that, right? Excuse me, lady. Wow, she's body blocking me. Rude. Okay, so here's where our next diary skip is gonna be. We're gonna set up for it. Give it a quick save right there. And let's see what happens. First try! Huzzah! I got it. Nice. So you can tell if it works if like you see those audio diaries are popping up and then they're just going away immediately. That's that's how you know if you got it right. Also, I've been corrected by chat. I think they heard my jet stream. It apparently is a golf stream. Oh, a golf. There we go. All right. All right. There's a. Uh, I still say it was golf stream. Apparently, is for, uh, I still say it was a good pun. <laughs> Hey, we're on the right current. <laughs> there you go. I know that one works. I remember the Oops. the current from Finding Nemo. That's right. Yes. Who doesn't remember that, honestly? Right? It's an emotional part of the movie. Okay. So we're going to fight some big daddies. So we are going to have to deal with some big daddies and little sisters in this level. We don't do a whole lot of it in this game, but we are going to do it right now. And I want to get my ice out. We're gonna freeze them and then we're gonna blow them up. And same thing for this guy. Come on. You are supposed to die easy. Oh, here we go. That's right. This guy actually requires some drill action. All right. So we're gonna harvest these little sisters. And so, so I did the diary skip, the full level diary skip earlier on. But we're gonna have these weird sequences of awkward silence with these little sisters. Normally when you rescue or harvest these little sisters, you get like a weird little monologue uh, situation going on. But since we did the diary skips, it's just silent. So we just get this this awkward silence of Eleanor just, <laughs> just looking at you. You got the subtitle so you can see what she would be saying. But it's, it's just this. And this happens three times in the level. And it eats up so much time. You're not like losing time because you can't skip it, but still. I could be zooming all over the place, you know? That's Stanley Poole. He's a creep. He's an excellent bad guy. Like, you love to hate him. All right. We're going to buy more things. We're going to get our telekinesis back. We are going to get Scout. That is going to help us get our drill underwater later on again. And we're going to get Winter Blast 2. Winter Blast 2 kind of replaces um, telekinesis as the OP plasmid. Winter Blast is that good one. Let's refuel. Probably didn't need to buy that e pipe but whatever. Oop, not that yet. Let's get a picture. Let's get our Electro Bolt out. Come on now. There we go. I was a little slow picking that up, but that's all right. We got it. Extra wrench damage. Very nice to get. Where are you at, little sister? There you are. Now we get awkward silence number two. Hopefully we can get some good drill dashes and get out of this room before that weird little cutscene plays. But let's see. Yeah, right. we got to, to the door. That's fine. So the, a neat little thing during this neat is kind of like really terrible. If you like pull out a plasmid or switch your plasmids while this is going on, it'll mess It'll mess it up, and it'll, like, not give you credit for dealing with the little sister. Um, so you just want to make sure you're not switching around plasmids when you're when you're harvesting them, because that'll totally softlock the game and, and just be done. All right. Get some more drill fuel, and we will get out of here. 
Zooms. 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 Oh, I am out of out of the drill fuel. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna just deal with this, this way then. We're not out of drill fuel. We're out of grenades. That's too bad. We'll do it old school. Slapping them. Yeah. Suspiciously long grenades for some reason during this run, but that's fine. It's not not the end of the world. I think I just got bad loots from the big daddies. Marathon okay. luck hits many ways. It's a thing. It's a thing. It, it afflicts us all at some point. But not a big deal, not a big deal. Could be worse. I've had worse, I've had worse marathon luck, to be honest. Ooh, we got really far out of there. Nice. This is the third and final awkward scene of silence with Stanley Poole, the, the creepo. Yeah, like, he really is like a terrible, terrible NPC. Um, during a casual playthrough, you gotta hear all about him and this is a very good bad guy. Grab that Eve hypo there. Oh no, what a bad roll dash, how sad. And we are done with this level. Out of here, all right. Now, on to Fontaine Futuristics, the level that has the horrible, horrible theater skip. Hopefully it goes fine. We'll see. closer to the end of this level, so it won't be right away. We get another one of those full-level diary skips. Part way into this level here. This is it, Chief. End of the line. If I'm right, Eleanor's mama's using Adam to force all Rapture's minds and memories We'll grab this tonic and world. replace it with, uh, this Grant one here. reckons it'll make that child a saint. Now, Eleanor's in a deep, dark place beneath Fontaine headquarters, and to keep you alive, we need to sneak in and, and find, find her. <laughs> Let's go. October 9th, 1967. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Gilbert Alexander, and by the time you hear this, I will be clinically insane. Ah, through the bushes there. I am recording these diaries very nice. in advance as a... Lost ditch efforts. Yeah, the underwater sections are really like threaten visually appealing. They are. They're they're what well done. I enjoy them. Security checkpoint. The bio scan will ensure. Alright. Wait right here. Wait for this little quest mark thing. There we go, and we're gonna do a quick save. This arrow. Pump two, three. Oh, I didn't get it. Alright, let's try it again. This arrow like times it out for us. There we go. Oh. I thought I had it again. A little too quick on my part. It's always first try. That's right. There we go. There we go. Now I got it. There we go. I like to do that too. First try, no matter how many tries it takes me. Well, technically, it's all just one really long attempt when you think about it. That is, that is, I like that. That's a good way to think about it. I, I appreciate that logic. Exactly. All right. So we'll set up some trap rivets here and right here. And right here. And I guess just one right there. Don't do that. All right, there we go. Got him. Oh, there's one left, apparently. There we go. That fight could have been a little faster, but that's okay. Beep. Go around and collect some loots and wait for uh, one of my favorite NPCs, Gil Alexander. He's fun. Protector. Alright, so here's Gil Alexander. He's 
A consciousness that's been stuck inside of a little security bot. Hi, buddy. Normally he'd be spouting some dialogue at me, but I skipped over his dialogue with a radio message. Or with an audio diary, rather. Normally I would shoot a grenade at him and one hit him, but like I say, I'm suspiciously low on grenades for some reason. Not getting the good loot. That's all right. All right. There we go, there we go. At least I have all the drill fuel I need. That's the important one. So I can zoom around. The theater skip. <laughs> easy. Like I say, it's like an easy trick, but if you mess it up, it becomes a nightmare. But other than that, then I think the other answer is the, uh, the full level diary skips. They become... I don't know, it's just tough. I just realized, like by the way, uh, I had my OBS side muted for that, so the question I asked is, what's the hardest part of the run? Oh, <laughs> nice. I just realized I had that muted on my head. I'm just talking, I'm just talking. Answering That's questions said, without a reference. Way, nothing else is missed. <laughs> Open up. All right, let's get out of here. Do we need to destroy like three of these little relays? We can just zap them. Oh, hi, person who's just right in front of me all of a sudden. I'm gonna collect some grenades here. All right, we got it. I like to put this right there, so that this big daddy leaves me alone. Yes, you attack that guy. He's a much better target. We're gonna get ready for another uh, death warp. After we destroy the second relay here. Bam. Zap. There we go. Now we're gonna do theater skip right now. Hopefully it goes really smoothly. We'll see. Sometimes it does, this been, this been, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. Hyped up. It's been very hyped up. I'm curious to see this. Right? <laughs> so we're going to grab this. We're going to set it on its side here. Oh, is it going to stack real nice for me? Oh, it is. Okay. We're going to set that right there, and we're going to set this bump right on top of that. Oh, nice and straight. Beautiful. Not so straight. We need this thing to rotate. A little bit, a little bit more. There we go. That's good. So far, so good, but this is where it gets tough. Are you making stairs? That is exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as these, th oh, this thing rotated a little more than I wanted it to. That should be fine. Okay, you're good so far. Oh, it's not one to let me jump. That is the sad thing. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Oh my God, I made it look easy. <laughs> All right. That was nice and smooth. It's not always that nice and smooth. Do I have any grenades? Just made stairs. No, not the kind I want. All right. So we are gonna um, peek around the corner until this thing is visible. Oh, that was, got that really quick too. This, I'm making this look easy, guys. It's, it's a lot tougher than I made it look. That was, that was very good. Happy with, happy with how that turned out. So normally we'd have to go through this whole sequence where we go and interact with Gil Alexander and fight all these enemies, and then after we do all that, then we can destroy that one relay. But as you said, we made stairs and we're able to just climb over that whole area and, and do some sequence breaking. That is a very creative trick. I believe discovered by K... Uh, discovered by KPC? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong on that. By the way, I do know KPC is a great Bioshock runner, so I do see them in chat. He is, and we are getting, this is unfortunate. I think we are getting some really sad um, diary, which can, or dialogue, which can happen in this level. Normally, this little flip would have popped up and I could have hit it and moved on by now. Sometimes the dialogue just gets goofy in this level. 
And I, I think that's happening here. It was fine up till this point, so we'll just sit here and just hang out for a second. Just wait. Luckily, we're almost at the end of the level, so that shouldn't hamper us too much after this point. I think in the background, there's some dialogue going on that we can't hear since I did the skips. But this is unfortunate. What's happening? Come on, game. There it Taking is. Taking a wee bit here. Yeah, yeah. Losing a lot of time on that. That's all right. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I did something to make the game mad, but yeah, every once in a while, um, that could kind of just happen. All right. Out of my way, guy. Also, I do have confirmation in chat that apparently uh, KPC didn't find theater skip, but apparently he found the next trick we'll be doing. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that is this here. So, as I said, we can pull our drill underwater. We use our scout, which kind of puts us into spirit mode. As we hit, like, right before we hit that flood drain, and when we get back into our body, like, once the level rises, um, we just have our drill. So that's how we do our next underwater drill section. Awesome. Yeah, that's a super neat drill. trick. So cool. That scout is like... was found by, uh... Pavilos. That's who... What's that? Oh, Pavilos. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Found by pa yeah, Pavilos. Yeah, I think that's, that's like, ancient Bioshock 2 speedrunning discoveries. But it's a good one. An oldie but a goldie. Oh, no. This is the, the trick KPC was talking about. This, um... This is Fontaine Futuristics Part 2. And, uh... We used to have to play through this whole level, but we can pretty much skip past the entire thing. We found a way, so we have to gather these little flowers. We have to gather four of them in this level. But we found a way to just skip all of that uh, plasma slot. I'm gonna get one, let me buy my things. Winter Blast, there we go. Eve upgrade, excellent. Yeah, we found a way to just grab all four of them in one go and just save all the time. We're gonna save all the time. I'll do a, a really quick save here just to make sure things don't get messed up. So we just, as I said, we I'm, I've uh, moved my use button to my mouse wheel, so we just spam the mouse wheel and grab all four of those plants in one. It's a neat trick. Yeah, I got those guys. Do I only have to fight two of those guys? Bear oh, no, never mind. More of them are popping up. Loot this. Bam, bam. Give me more grenades. I'll have to go buy some in a sec here. Attack this so I get cheap shot. Oh no. Hmm. Not as much cash money as I wish I had. That's alright. That's okay. Now we do a little little wave of enemies. Is that gonna blow up? Oh, I didn't shoot it far enough. <laughs> oh no, that's all right. That's just a rogue grenade just sitting there then. Where are they at? Where are they at? Oh, there we go. Give me more grenades. No more grenades. Well, that's too bad. I saw you up there. Don't need that tonic. Alright. Oh. No. Oh. I thought there was another person. There's not. We're good. Let's buy another frag grenade. Sublime. Sublime. Damn you, Data. Get that. We'll get that. Yeah, so so this recent skip that we found where we grab all four of those flowers in one go saved several minutes. It's it's a very good very good skip. I'm grab those those uh grenades there since I'm low. Alright. Alright. Can I say legs and eggs, please? I can, and I just did. I hope it was everything you thought it could be. All right. 
Let's go. Alright, on to the last couple levels here. Pre-recorded chat is cute. It, yeah, I love how that works. That's It's a really tricky thing. Oh, so you planned it out. Yeah, I, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. I like that. Alright. Yeah. Okay, now for the annoying level. Actually, I said that um, Siren Alley was the worst level earlier. That's wrong. This is almost almost unequiv unequivocally the, the worst level in the game, just because Eleanor Lamb is just going to talk at you. It's just a full level of Eleanor Lamb just, just talking at you. Persephone. And it's kind of annoying. We're finally here. Find Eleanor, son, and fast. Her mama's got all rapture dying to keep you two apart. All right, here we go. Here we go. And this level's also really easy. I think you fight two brute splicers. You fight two enemies, and that's it for this level. We make some other good, like, really creative use of the, uh, Gout Plasmid as well. Father, come quickly. I... I'm trapped. I wonder, Delta. Do you know Zooms. You zooms. Here? Have you any idea what my daughter has given you? As I watch you now, I envy your ignorance. All right, we'll get our scout out. You're going to use scout in the corner here. Oh, did I not use it at the right spot? Let's try it again. Come on now. Okay, we use it in the corner, and it tricks the game to thinking that we have entered that center chamber in there, and it, like, initiates the next part of this level. So we skip an entire, like, big sister fight by doing that. Did I get that? I did get that. Nice. Use the controls to break the quarantine seal. You get some weird like double audio where these two are speaking at you, but Sinclair is also speaking to you in the background. Kind of neat. So she found a way to restore you. Zoomies like a cat at 3 a.m. That's right. Sayeth, is that is that true? Did you actually do a glitchless Bioshock 2 run? Good for you. It's it's good for the bones. And she has been watching you ever since. Because what are you waiting for, kid? Restroom break time. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> a good time to go get a glass of water, use a bathroom. Anything to take you away from the Eleanor Lamb dialogue. The girl lying on that bed. That's a freaking awesome skip. It really is. It's super, super clever. Like, it's, it's just one of those weird ones where it's like, wow, that's, that's awesome that it sequence breaks like that. Shape by you alone, just as she has always wanted. 20 seconds remaining. And you get trauma teddy in the bottom left corner. That teddy bear's seen some things. Look at his face, look at his eyes bugging out. That teddy bear's seen some things. Yeah, that's, that's my nickname for him is trauma teddy, yeah. I can see why. Mm-hmm. Just sort of chilling there. Just, just terrified, doesn't want to look at, at Sophia Lamb. Just look away. I don't see anything. And I think I think I'm gonna have a surprise for you guys at the end of the uh, at the end of the run. It's it's just kind of a funny thing. I don't. We'll we'll see how it rolls out. Usually, usually when I'm I'm wrapping up a stream, um, it happens. I, I don't want to spoil it for you, but we'll see we'll see if it happens like I think it's gonna happen. I know when I planned something out, apparently my whole game decided to, uh, mute. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, the cutscenes, for some reason, broke entirely, and I don't know why they, uh, none of them play audio for me in my run. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't catch that. I was watching uh, a run, and I didn't catch that. Me. Huh. Odd. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Mother stopped my heart long enough to sever our bond. Staying near me won't stop you from dying now. Or what are we doing on time? Oh, I'm a little, oh, I'm like a couple minutes over my PB, but that's, that's fine. This We're still doing just fine on time. That will allow you to take control yeah, you, of you got plenty of time. And, oh, well, like, the GU hotfix, it's never extremely stressful. We're not going to break your legs if you go over estimate. Right. Oh, no, I, I don't think I'll be going over estimate at all. I think I'll be just fine for that, but, well, yeah, no, I think we'll be fine for that. I got a few minutes to spare before we start getting to that point. I'm not too worried about that at all. And if you do, it's I. I know this 
this feels a bit strange, Father. But now you can see through. Now we get to hear Eleanor just talk at us for the rest of the level. It's, it's kind of a neat part of the game. Like, you get to see what the world looks like through the eyes of a little sister. It's actually kind of neat. But just that Eleanor dialogue, it's just, it's just too much. So, as you saw before, Rapture has looked all crappy and, and, like, everything's busted up. But apparently, this is what Rapture looks like in the eyes of a little sister. Kind of cool. Pretty good. Kind of cool. And we collect these, like, big sister like suit parts we're gonna turn eleanor lamb into a big sister and she's actually like a super awesome sidekick if you're doing like a casual playthrough she's she's pretty tough she's a pretty awesome sidekick um she's just kind of annoying with the talking he will attempt to reach Subject Delta. What Mother did to me left me very weak. I would do this part So, the three NPCs that I said that you can either rescue or save, there's three statues in this level, and the statues change whether you've saved or, or killed the NPCs. It's kind of a neat thing. That's one of them right there. We passed the first one in that earlier hallway. Kind of, oh, kind of a neat little thing. A better of you go. Oh, oh, go ahead. oh no, I was gonna say a better what? Oh, uh, a better uh, instead of break your legs. If you go overestimate, you'll be sleeping with the fishes. Oh my god, that's that's perfect. I didn't think of that. Well, that's so nat. That's like a natural fit. That's that's very good. The ideal child. That's very good. Serving the common good without questioning it. You have saved me from that. <laughs> That is actually oh, there's been a lot of puns this week. Puns, puns are good for your health. As they grow up in rapture, I feel it all. When you were with the little ones... All right, so we got all three parts of our suit. We're going to go bring them to Eleanor Lamb, and then we'll get put back in our big daddy body. about one thing. I have been watching you, Father. Studying the way you have treated others. And now I know who I am. I survive. I survive. The cost. Just. All right. All right. So this, what I'm about Yeah, that was do. so the saving and the rescuing of the little sisters and of the NPCs and stuff to get the different endings. I've always thought is like a cool part of the Bioshock series. And I was very sad that that was not like an included thing in Bioshock that Infinite. There is, better. there is no like. Good, bad choice. There's only the one ending. Yeah. I was kind of bummed out about that. Still gets me. Still gets me. Not, it's not that big of a deal. Alright. These suits. There we go. That's Eleanor Lamb. Of you, uh, father. The skin of a born survivor. Go ahead. All worked out. I was gonna say I don't know if you cut out on the uh, stream end, but I can hear you for a brief mother moment. Doesn't stand a oh. Chance. Well, hopefully I don't think you cut off on the stream end. But... Hopefully it's all good now. All right, so now we, we get a plasmid that we can use to uh, summon Eleanor Lamb. And like I say, she's actually really tough and a useful um, useful sidekick. I'm going to buy some grenades real quick. Give me some grenades. There we go. We get Subject Delta. just the one audio diary skip that we need to do in this level, and we can just do a save load and play an audio diary manually oh for this God. one. She's nice and easy. This building into the trench. It's miles deep. We have to find Sinclair. So I'm a little low on cash. I feel like this next level is going to be a little slow because I won't have all the drill fuel I want, but eh, it'll be fine. It won't be that much slower. Right, so there is a full level diary skip at the very beginning of this level. This is the one that gives me the most trouble. Let's hope it's nice to me. Oh, first try. Huzzah. All right. All right. Nice. Hey. Nice. You got to be quick with that one. Right, we're going to try to hack that machine in the background there. Did we get it? Oh, we got it. Nice. Nice. That's where we're going to buy all our drill fuel from. 
I don't think I have any money for drill. Oh, I got a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's not too bad. It's not too I got a little bit of drill fuel there. Can I grab that drill fuel? Oh, I did. That's actually kind of hard to grab. Usually it likes to grab rocks instead of drill fuel. Let's go. There we go. Well, I got plenty of drill fuel. I might, I might not have a shortage at all. We'll see. Do we get another one of those little awkward silence moments here since I did the full level audio diary skip? Usually there's a little bit of dialogue between you and Sinclair, who has sadly been turned into a big daddy against his will. Um, but instead he just leans up against the glass and you guys just get to enjoy this, this silent moment. Just staring into each other's big daddy eyes. <laughs> yep. What's that? Takes a lot of the tension out of the situation, doesn't it? <laughs> it, re it really does. All right, buddy. Y'all finished taking a break, just leaning up against the glass. There we go. He's really tired. I don't know. It's those he those suits are heavy. It's hard to move around in these big daddy suits. Oh. <laughs> Oh, why are you hitting me from the back? That's not very nice. All right. Now we're going to go kill Sinclair, because he's been, like I say, he's been turned into a bad guy against his will. So it's it's like a mercy killing. We're going to grab some drill fuel over here, though, real quick. In the shower. There we go. Get our ice out, we'll get our grenade out. There we go. Get his key, put it there. Get some loot. And get out of here. Oh, hi, guy. Please stay there. Don't get in my way. Grab these grenades. Oops. There we go. I thought there were more. Oh, there is. Oh, oh well. It's not a big deal. The other grenade went flying underneath the stairs. That's too bad. Somehow I'll survive. All right. There's like basically three wings in this level and we're finishing up with wing number one. We're on to wing number two here where we get a harvest a room full of little sisters. Kind of messed up actually. Point, point, point. Grab more drill fuel. All right, got it. Oh, we got a lot of drill fuel. We're doing just fine with the drill fuel now. Looking a little rough at the beginning of this. So these fights, usually it's like a wave of enemies that you fight, but we found a way to sort of cheese these out to where we get to end them early by doing these fights in a certain way. It's not like we're fighting them real fast. It is just like breaking the sequence just because of the way that we do these fights for some reason. Come over here. Jumping over there like summons this uh, big daddy to follow me. We're going to jump up on top of the glass here. There we go. I'll get my machine guns out. And... And we're done. Normally there'd be a whole bunch more enemies, but we just take care of those three ones, wait for a second, this turn yellow, and we are good. And now get out of here. Super fast. Zoom. Zoom. Buy some more drill fuel if I have any cash money for it. I do. Perfect. A little bit. I got enough. That was wing two. Now we're on to the third wing and final wing of this level. And then we'll go to the boss fight. I'm assuming it's going to be better than Bioshock 1's boss fight. <laughs> you would be wrong. It's the easiest boss fight oh. ever. It's, 
It's incredible. So there was a Twitter poll that I saw done once. And the question is, what is the most difficult boss in all the Bioshock games? And the end boss fight of this game won. It won as, as people voted that it was the toughest. However, I'm going to show you that that is factually incorrect. This this boss fight is beyond easy. Oh, where am I? I'm zooming all over the place. Getting zealous, zealous with my zoom. Uh, excuse me, sir. Get out of my way. There we go. Yeah, this. It's almost it's almost laughable how easy this boss fight is. This is right. the one downside of the Bioshock games. I really like the first game. I don't remember there being any amazing boss fights. Infinite. I don't remember any good boss fights. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a uh, skimp skimps on the the boss fights. I want to um let's summon Eleanor here. He's good for this part of the fight. Where are you, enemies? Come on now. They taking their time. Oh, they're really taking their time here. Are you okay, Eleanor Lamb? Because you're just smashing me right in the face. That's not what I need you to do. Oh, there we go. Oh. I think we're done. I think we're done with this fight. There we go. Well, that took a little longer than I hoped. I didn't break that sequence the way I'd hoped. I was I was a little short on uh, proximity grenades. If I had more proximity grenades, we could have made that fight go really fast, but that's fine. It was fast enough for all intents and purposes. Okay, so we're going to do another death warp here. Or our health real quick. Oops. Oh, oh, are we... Can I jump? There we go. And we just... Ah, die right there. And now we're going to go to the boss fight. And I'll show you how this goes. Yeah, Lady Comstock, I agree. Hardest fight in all the Bioshock games. I absolutely agree with you. All right. I'm stepping inside the boss tank, Father. We let her do her thing. In a second, all the enemies. So the boss fight of this game, it's not like a boss. It's just a horde of enemies. But it's like a bunch of brutes. It's a bunch of, like, alpha big daddies and a bunch of splicers that come at us. Um, but I'm going to show you how we deal with these guys. To a boil. We got some loots. All right, here they are. They're spawning. We're just gonna run around. We're just gonna run around. Actually, I'm just gonna stand here. This, this is how we deal with this boss fight. Huh? You, you die. <laughs> and then we just sit in the Vita chamber till the timer runs out, because that's all this boss fight is—is is just a timer. We just wait here and bide our time. Oh, that's it. Done. Flawless victory. Time happens, I'm assuming, once the boss is dead. Yeah, the, it's just, we don't even, it's just, it's just <laughs> when the time runs out, eventually. So what we're waiting for is Eleanor Lamb is in there boiling water. And once she's done boiling all the water, it's done. And then we just need to like, flip a switch, shoot a couple pipes, and then walk to the exit. It lasts like two and a half minutes. Oh, this, this. Well, I think this was a, a good time to ask. Uh, do you have any shout outs you want to give anybody? Yeah, uh, well, let's, I'll shout out the Bioshock speedrun community. I suppose they're a really great community. And like I say, the Bioshock games, at least, especially one and two, have a very friendly learning curve. So if anybody's looking for a cool, fun, you know, game that's not going to be a nightmare to learn, Bioshock are good games to, to, to learn. Um, otherwise, I saw some of my homies out here in chat. I saw Proto, I saw KPC. Oh, I see Aqua. Hey, buddy. I see you there. Nice. Um, Alpha does um, Bioshock Infinite runs mostly. But yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. Thanks, thanks for having me. I hope you guys enjoyed the run. <laughs> it's hope, been a fun hope, experience. Hope, just, hopefully, I'm more. With this boss fight, it's just waiting. Hopefully, most of the run was more entertaining than this. Oh, and and let's get what a little surprise. Hi, Bentley. Oh, oh, he's not coming out to say hi like he normally does. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do my uh, steam finishing uh, lines. That's usually when he pops up. Okay, guys, that's it for me. All done. No, no. All right. My Chihuahua, for those of you who don't know, has been sitting 
inside my, inside my shirt, on my belly, this whole run. And usually when I'm getting finished with the stream, he'll pop his head up through my neck hole and say hi to everybody. But I think he's pretty... You have to pay the dog tax. I think he's pretty, pretty tight. Well, here, let's do this. I'll pick him up. He's my little cha-cha. Sometimes when he gets angry, he growls. We call him the terror. Hi, bud. Hi, handsome dude. Aww. Mwah. He's my little I devil. Have a tag. You have a I'm what? I'm feeling all too well. I got a few chihuahuas myself. He's the good boy. Also, does your shirt have sharks on it? It does have sharks on it. I suppose I didn't even think about that, but that is very fitting. It's a very fitting shirt today. In more than one way. I have a bird <laughs> on mine. I didn't even think. I, I, I just I thought of the first thing I think of was a bird. Hey, what is a bird but a skyfish, right? All right, we're gonna be done with the run in just a little bit, like five, four, three, two, one. That is the run. And we'll go ahead and, right. uh, like I say, we, we get like the uh, the bad ending, but we get the good variant of the bad ending because there's a good and bad variant of the good and bad endings. But anyways, yeah, that's that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Like I say, was I overestimate? Oh, I, I was overestimate. Oh my God. I thought <laughs> Only by a wee bit. You'll be sleeping what with have I the done? fishes now. That's right, I'll Not be sleeping actually, with the but... fishes. We get to say sleeping with the fishes. Not actually. Everybody. Yeah, that's, that's all good. The meme. Just barely. Almost made it. Though. Oh, there we go. Now, see, now I'm done with it, and he knows when I'm finished, and now he's coming to say hi. Hold on. Let me see really quick. Okay, hold on, hold on. You got a 115.38. Yep. I don't know if we make oh, don't up. worry, though. Your, uh, your estimate is actually a... Uh, a 115.38.01. Oh, I, I nailed oh, it oh, oh, one. Perfect. Yes. I, just, I just barely beat it, actually. Point, barely beat point the estimate. Oh, oh, one. Nailed it. <laughs> there you go. I can't believe it. You did it. What can I say when you're this good? <laughs> exactly. All anyway, right. uh, before we do go on to our next run, I do want to say, uh, if anyone does want to find you anywhere on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Find me at Benedictator. That's pretty much my handle for all the social media. So I'm on, I'm on the Twitch. I'm on the Twitters, although I don't use Twitter very often. Uh, that's that's what my name is on the Discord. If you go to my Twitch channel, I got some links on my Twitch channel too, so you can check that out if you want. Um, YouTube Benedictator on YouTube, where I upload my speedruns. But yeah, yeah. Like I say, thanks for having me. This was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. It was a great run. It was great having you. I rejected her. It was a fun time. Uh, that being said, though, uh, we are going to be uh, going, uh, getting ready for our next run. So while we do that, we're going to be right back with a quick wellness break. I recommend you uh, stand up, touch your toes, get some water, do what you need to do. Uh, we're going to be right back really quick. But before we do go, I just want to send a reminder that uh, Frame Fatales, the all-women speedrunning oh, event, will be returning on August 15th through the 21st with Flame Fatales. Uh, if you'd like any information about this, go to gamesunquick.com slash Frame Fatales for more info. We'll be right back. Chose to survive. All right, we are back. We've been having a lot of fun uh, going, uh, you know, looking at the deeper side of things into the depths. Uh, but now we're on to our final run. Uh, we're going to plunge into the finale of this week, uh, this ocean. I guess it's not really ocean week. It's more just aquatic games. We're going to be plunging into the finale of all this. Uh, we're going to probably be looking at one of my favorite horror games. I actually really like this game and really like this run and this runner. It's a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, anyway, up next, and for our final run, we're going to be having Soma with Blood Thunder. Uh, let's dive on in. All right, Soma, filling out the spooky times here. Past midnight now for me, you know. All the kids are asleep. Time to yeah. get a little scary. Bioshock is a horror game, but it doesn't quite feel like it. You're just blasting through, using telekinesis, killing all the things. But hey, you know, no weapons in Soma. It's uh, from the... Same devs as Amnesia and Penumbra and Amnesia Rebirth. It's just as broken, so if you've seen those runs, this is pretty much the same. So, we're going to hop into it. We're going to have a little cutscene. We're going to explain the story. There are, are big spoilers for this if you're still wanting to play it for whatever reason. It came out years ago, but uh, yeah, there are some big spoiler warnings. So, like new game. Go into the, the story here. Time will start after this cutscene's over. You know, when you get right. your first input. Nice little quote to start Find off with. Your call. This cutscene's gonna set up case? our story, like I said. Our Did main character is Simon. 
Oh, that, he's a bit annoying to listen to throughout the course of the run, but the as we find out from here, he's in a car accident and he suffers here, a this. lot of brain damage. No, that, so that's he has trouble guy. thinking things through really? and comprehending very simple Ashley, uh, things to that tell you something. get told to him many, many Listen, times, as we'll see throughout the game. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? I just want to say David really quickly, um, one, do less snow in time again. Is there never enough time? And then two, Soma is actually, like, for it's for a while I know that GDQ's time. gonna be doing the Ocean Week thing, doing the aquatic games. Uh, Soma is actually the game that I kind of wanted to base the episode around entirely. Oh, so you gotta answer your yeah, phone when you wake up. Big thing. The time started in case you missed yeah, it. That's me. Fully closed as we're waking up. We got our shoes on and everything. We're ready to go. We got the quarantine life down. Yeah, just a... Bad dream. Are we still on for so today? We're getting this phone call because yeah, we're setting up an appointment to go talk to a doctor, help us potentially with our brain damage. Don't worry, I I got it somewhere. So he's just okay. making sure that we drink our penny milk. Be okay. sure to drink your penny milk. There's three spots where this can spawn, and it's always in the last spot you check. So we're gonna check the cupboards, the bathroom, and then the desk. So there. Oop. one check, two, and it's gonna spawn right here. We got our penny milk. Gonna drink it and head out for a nice time on the town. It's like milk, but the taste is like sucking on a penny. So now we're kind of in an auto scroller. There's one big choice you have to make here. It's whether to answer the phone call from your friend or to completely ignore him. And if you ignore him, it's a little bit faster. So we're just spamming right click so that we don't have to talk to him. He wants to talk about like coming into work or getting the shift covered or something. It's been a long time since I've listened to it, so I'm not exactly sure. But uh, have a little radish pop up on our phone and ignore that. All right. So there's a few times in this game and in this run particularly where you load into a map, but you don't actually see what's around you for a couple seconds as it fades in. You can actually move during those sections, which we'll see on uh, on this next level. So whenever it fades to black, I'm just gonna be holding forward. So when I spawn in, I've just walked forward. I'm gonna run into a wall. And right where that wall is, there's a keypad I need to enter the code into. So right here, we're just walking forward. And when I can finally see, we just look down and the keypad should be right there. Oop. Nice little time save. Hello, Dr. Munchie. Save, like popping around doesn't really save time, but oh, sometimes when you're just running you forward, Get a little Simon bored after a couple Jared, runs, right? so Dr. Munch, like the jump. Uh, uh, so this is the doctor. But I'm working um, on it. Well, he's working Actually, on it. You're helping me right right. Now. Is this, part this is of kind of like work? his yeah. thesis work, the become a doctor. So he's going to scan our brain data and upload our consciousness, and that kind of sets the stage like for all oh, of what Soma's you, uh, about. It's about what makes a person a person. Is it their memories? Is it their body? Is it both? Is it their soul? Nice little dialogue here and there. There's a lot of breaking this game, but there's also instances of just kind of having to wait for some dialogue to pass, like here. Uh, there's one very right. notorious elevator away. section late into the game, which puts a lot of runners off from right. actually picking this up. Right. Sometimes you need a little break here and there. Born you know? 1988, July 16th. Right. Flat neurograph. I hope everyone in chat is ready for the scariness. Okay. It's not scary yet, well, unless you're afraid of doctors, in which case. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture. Uh, I guess so. Indians yeah. thought cameras would steal their souls. Actually, a quick question, I guess, That's is the not. general um, speedrun for Soma. Let's hope they're wrong. Uh, would you say that this is an easy game to Ready? learn or kind of to get into as a speedrun? It is. There's two main things you kind of have to get down uh, in the engine, and that's prop flying and prop clipping, which we'll touch on uh, here in just a second. I'll say right now, I do know, all right, I've seen, I've seen both tricks. And uh, the thing that scared me from this game was the prop flying. Because I right. think there's like the one part you do have like five minutes or something. Yeah, the hovers um, are a little strange. We're just breaking out. So now we're in Upsilon, which, like, how did we get here? We were just in a doctor's office, right? We're going to do a prop clip. We're going to do another one here, and then we'll explain kind of what's going on. But uh, basically, our brain data was uploaded to like a server or whatever. And then a whole bunch of stuff happened. 
There's a comet that hit the world and basically killed off everyone on the surface. And there was this base constructed underwater to research stuff at some point, uh, which is where we are now. And then our brain data got transferred to a chip that got put into a different body. And this is how we've ended up down underwater. So we're not in our original body. This is actually uh, one of the workers here. We're gonna do a little skip. So we're gonna crawl in this vent back out and we're gonna unload the section because you're supposed to be in there. Now we're out of bounds. Hey, look at that. So we actually do play this on a down patch version just because of this trick here. Um, it's not really needed because otherwise you just crawl through the vent, but it's a little slow. So small little time save. And now we're gonna do prop flying, which is a little scary. Um, it's not too bad. This is actually probably one of the scariest ones because the chair is not a super reliable prop to use this. Um, the more uniform the object is, the easier it is to stand on and move around. Uh, we will have plenty of time to explain hovers in just a second, but a lot more story stuff happens. So these codes are always the same. And then we get to meet the best character in this game, Catherine. So much better than Simon. Hey, Wish she was the there? playable character. I found but, the dome ceiling. Uh, it is what it is. She's also uploaded oh, into better. the data. Simon, was it? And she's going to be our companion Jared, Simon, for pretty much Hi, all Simon. of the game. I'm Catherine. But she Can is because she's uploaded it to the server. I was hoping she can only answers. be with us when the I tool that we have not. is plugged in. Know? So there's going to be stretches where, where she's not around what is this because place? we haven't plugged her in. She kind of gives us a lot of exposition. Never been there some of the gaps. The Grimoire in Toronto. Is Ask that really Simon's no, lack of understanding of anything. I don't know what that is. That's unexpected. Did you come directly from Toronto? Yeah, I did. And it was very unexpected. Have you seen any people, like staff or field technicians? Yeah. So there are there are a lot of robots around the areas, which kind of fill you into the strange. fact that they're not actually robots, they're robots with was that? Consciousness stuck into them. Whoa. We kind of skip all that because it's a speed. I think this we don't place is about to collapse. For any of that. What do I do? Uh, how do I get there? So the, the two clip, the the two tricks that I said are mainly in this run. And if you're watching these rebirth, it's the same engine, so you experience the exact same tricks. Um, shit, shit, and it all shit, relies boy. around the What's attributes that? of props. Oh. Whenever you pick up a prop initially, it doesn't really have collision. But if you are interacting with it, like you're putting it next to yourself or even like clipping through your own collision, and then you grab it again, it becomes solid, which can let you stand on it and act as a flooring, um, which we're about to do again. And then prop clipping, if it's not underneath you, it's going to look for the shortest way to push you out of that object so the collision is isn't uh, overlapping. And a lot of times that forces you through a wall because that's the quickest way and the easiest way the item has to undo that collision. So we're going to grab this plank. Uh, anytime we're in the open water sections of this game, we're just going to hover through it because it's faster. We're just going to hover up. It also becomes really hard to see sometimes. Um, and that's not just a stream thing. It's also hard for me to see. So we're using some cues from the environment itself. Now hover over this way. We don't want to go up Should too high. Much... Go for it. So, uh, oh, god. Uh, ask your question. We got some time here. I was gonna say you're pretty much like making like a custom boat with these uh, like different tools, and I don't want to do the, uh, the hovers essentially. Yeah, we're, we're making our own flooring that we get to bring along with us, and depending on how far away it is from us, we have the ability to like, use this roll to bring it closer or further away. It can either let us gain height really, really quickly, but if it's close to us and we can do that, then we're going to have trouble standing on the prop. Uh, and inversely, if we put it far away from us, it's gonna be really easy to stand on, but it's not gonna <laughs> give us height. We can just kind of walk forward. Um, and here, it's gonna look a little weird. I'm gonna kind of hit down on the side of this rock. But as you're playing this game, and, and a lot of games do this too, is that there's a preload trigger there, which means there's like a, an area that you walk through that tells the game, hey, we're getting close to the end of this level, so go ahead and start loading in the next level so that we don't have to go through a actual load screen. You just kind of go into this area, and then boom, you're in the, you're in the next. And the reason we want to hit that 
instead of just going through a load screen, is it's going to keep this prop that we took with us, this sheet of metal, and it's actually going to keep it loaded in. Uh, if we went through a load screen, it would unload. It's just loading in the new map. It doesn't care about what came before. And we're going to clip out of this and use that once again, but we need to go into the next map so we can actually continue on with the game. Uh, so you're going to notice here it doesn't fade to black. It just kind of stops for a second and then opens the door, which means we hit we don't hit the preload trigger, then we get a black screen here, uh, and that's no good. I just want to okay. say, I love the uh, the whole, like, all the, what, the what is that, the door. algae and the clams and the shells and oh, yeah, the and stuff. The environments in this are great. Although we don't really get a look at it, it still is one of the best underwater sections besides, like, Subnautica. We're going to clip out yeah. and save because this is a little sketchy. Um, a lot of the hovers are a little safe because you're just over land, and if you fall, you can set it back up. Uh, this one's over a void. And if you fall into the void, then you have to restart. So here's our sheet of metal. You can see just a little bit of this was still preloaded in. We're going to set this up again, and we're going to hover. So everything below me right now is void. And we're going to use some of the map collision to know which way we need to go. You're supposed to set up a like train car to take you down this really long tunnel. You're supposed to power it up, and then there's a cutscene, and a whole bunch of other stuff that uh, we don't really care to do. But we're just going to fly through the void for a minute or two, uh, which is definitely the scariest part of this game. The monsters aren't really a thing. Uh, the atmosphere and stuff isn't really scary, but this, I'm not it gets my heart racing, you know. Just watching you do the run, I'm imagining like, it's just like a horror game, but then like putting like the old school cartoon animation, we had like the guy, like he has like the two planks of wood and then he's constantly making a bridge just by nailing the old plank in front of the new plank. Yeah, just pick it up and put it down. Exactly. But instead make that into a horror game. So you can see the train car, like the, the railway right below us, which means we're going in the right way. We're not too far. And up here soon, we should see a big gray box. And there it is, which means we're really close. We're also going to need to lose some height because we went up a little too high, but that's okay. So our goal is this ladder at the very end. That's how we're going to get back inbounds. It's also the very end of the level, which is really nice. So uh, you can also... Right, so I have to ask. Yeah, go for it. How did people find this? Uh, you know. Just messing around with stuff. <laughs> That's a fair answer. I always like have to wonder because like it's one thing to do like the prop line, but like I'm assuming like maybe someone knew prop line was thing and they looked around for maybe a spot that they can kind of clip back in or something. Here we go again. Yeah, I kind of picked up a, a lot of times I like routing games, especially like in the rebirth when that came out, but some of those one that I didn't really get a chance to, so I don't know exactly who discovered what or the order of uh, the things, but uh I think usually the the easiest thing to go to in, in terms of testing games is object hovering. You know, everyone's tried to pick up an object, and, like stand right. on it and jump. So prop flying, I, I think, was found pretty quickly. And then, you know, it's a frictional games game. So I, people knew there was going to be a way to get out of bounds at some point. Um, Speaking so I, of which, by the way, I heard somebody got in Penumbra 1, 2, and 3 in SGDQ. That is true. We will be we will be doing a Penumbra trilogy run, all three games for SGQ. It's gonna be pretty awesome. They're also extremely broken uh, in a lot of different ways. Also, Simon has one of the best lines right there. He asks, "How big can the ocean be?" Um, <laughs> if that doesn't show you brain damage, I don't know what does. But so we're just gonna prop fly again. There's this pipe in the ground that kind of gives us a perfect line on where we need to go. Uh, I can turn on my flashlight here, but as you can see, the flashlight in this game doesn't <laughs> really do anything in these giant open waters. So we're going to do another hover, get to the end of the section. Uh, like I said, this one's not too scary because if I fall, I have the item. I can pick it back up and set it up. Uh, but you still got to make sure you're going the right way. You got enough height. You get over some obstacles, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, if you guys don't know me, my name's Blood Thunder. I run a whole bunch of different games. If you've watched the GDQ in the past, you've probably seen me, um, much like Ignisus uh, and been a dictator. I also run Bioshock 1, 2, Infinite, all the DLCs and all that good stuff. Um, so I'll also be at this upcoming GDQ. 
and the number trilogy. Doing a whole lot of practice uh, over on my channel as well. I like to do some frictional games and anthology runs, which is Penumbra, all the amnesias, this game, all back to back. It's a whole lot of fun. So, if you like these games, like these speed runs, you know where to find them. We're still hovering here, getting close to the end, I think. Ooh, we need a little bit more height. So, to gain height, I can either bring the object a little bit closer to me, or I can just hit jump. Um, you still have to be a little careful when you're doing this. Falling is relatively safe, but it still loses time, so we'll try not to do it when we can. And we'll get back to being inside the map, but we're going to be clipping through it anyways. Really, this game comes down to if we're inside the map, we're going to be doing a lot of prop clipping. If we're outside the map, we're going to be doing a hovering. Uh, if, you, if you want to get into this run, you just kind of have to master those two things, and then you're good. The rest is... Uh, Relatively simple. So we clip back in there, skip a whole bunch of walking. So this is a black screen, so we didn't hit the preload trigger along the way, which is normal. That's not one we need to hit. Right, we're in. Let's find a working escape vessel. Just gonna clip through there. Once again, the object when you do a prop clip is just looking for the shortest way to clip you out of the collision. So there it's like, all right, there's a whole lot of item to the right side. The left side's relatively short, so we're gonna send you to the left of the item, which is through the wall. And both of these tricks, uh, I kind of mentioned it, also work in Amnesia Rebirth. Uh, because it's the exact same engine and they didn't bother fixing anything, which is great about fictional games. There was like, hey, there's some cool stuff in our runs. We're not going to fix that, so you could have even more fun. If you like the look of this run, you probably like Amnesia Rebirth. Uh, it's the same style, less cutscenes. We're actually going to go and encounter our first monster in this game. I know, it's crazy, right? A monster? A monster in my horror games? I don't believe it. We're pulling three of these plugs out for whatever reason. I don't know the actual lore behind this area. So this guy's gonna get angry at us. Warning. Reactor collapse. Now he's gonna run away from them. But we're also underwater, so it's a, a little floaty. If you're not careful, you can like slam your head up against this the stairs. Okay, really dumb question. When you're doing the like the prop flying, if you fall, do you take fall damage? Uh, yes, but fall damage doesn't really do anything in this game. You'll never die from it. But it kind of distorts your vision, and you like walk at an angle for a little bit. What did you do? Huh. I messed up, okay? Can you get us out of here? I was thinking, like, yes, you're in the ocean. Like, do you, do you float down, or like, did gravity kill you? Like, what? What happened? Because like, I've seen the Amnesia Rebirth when you talk about. I know, like, you you can die from that. I think because you're in the desert and it's hard. But this is water. Yeah, if you're in the water sections, you actually don't take any fall damage. Fall damage, it's not really damage at all. Um, but if you're like inside and you drop down quite a bit, then you will. Can you steer this thing? I don't think in any of the frictional games you actually ever die from fall damage. Amnesia, you definitely can't. Um, but damage usually means you're going slower. Uh, at least in the Dark Descent the Machine for Pigs, taking damage makes you block at a slower speed, so you don't want to do it. The number is never like, there's never an instance of. Are you talking about where the you would actually take full damage, so I'm I've not entirely before. sure. Absalon, what are they? They're hmm. a manifestation of a malfunctioning station-wide artificial intelligence. We have Catherine oh, back. Wow. She's explaining what the station monster wide? we just fought was, which so is we the just wow. Made a powerful enemy. Um, no, no, it's always not like that. Wow. The AI isn't a persona. It doesn't feel or think like we do. It's more like, uh, it's more like a cancer. All right, was that the good shit? time. Looks like your sabotage worked better right. than expected. Yeah, we talked about before we started. I have a very important question. What is your favorite, either you can say fish or marine life creature? I'll go over the rest, uh, same question to the rest of chat as well. If you missed it, what is your favorite fish or marine life creature? I'm asking for all the runners today, since it is Ocean Week. For me personally, it's an easy answer. It's the octopus. Good clearly, choice. Clearly I think the best Stan had the same choice. There's not many uh, creatures out there that have multiple arms or tentacles, you know. It's 
pretty awesome. Yeah. Although, how do you feel about the squid? It's, the squid is like the discount octopus, you know. It's, Aww, it's not quite as good. It's like having Coke and Diet Coke. Like, one's clearly <laughs> the better choice, but you still kind of like the other. So I hear gonna, that. We're actually going to meet our little robo pal here. He's our rescue from this place. So we crashed. Catherine's not a great driver, but hey, she's a robot, can't blame her. Plays a nice little tune for saving us. You're the rescue team, huh? And then we're also doing a Good job. Not so much a trick, just kind of like a little fun no thing to do. Chance. It does save time, but it's known as door oh, juggling. Way, so you yeah, can yeah. move a lot slower when you're carrying objects, especially heavy okay. objects. Um, so if you're constantly jumping, where you're not slowed down, and then tossing the item further, you never get the, the slowness. It's a little difficult, because there's a lot of stuff in the way, and it's a big door, but the idea here is to just constantly, like, grab, throw this forward, grab, throw it forward, all that good stuff. So we're gonna need this later, as you can probably guess, it's for floating through water. Uh, fun fact about this, if this door touches one of these railings here, it actually just gets deleted from the game, so you don't want to do that. Don't know why, but it, it does, so don't have that happen. I'm gonna line up the satellite so we can call in a Zeppelin. It's a nice little underwater transport that we have to go on, but we're not gonna use. So here. Just transport real quick. Zeppelin's on its way. Gotta get ready. I'm gonna use this door to get a little bit closer. We're also gonna use this a second time to uh, go much further into the level. But we have to go through this process of stealing some chips. So yeah, it's a good time. So we're gonna plug Catherine back in. She's gonna talk to us about some stuff. Um, and she's gonna assign us the task of stealing some chips. Delta, at least that's what you said before the crash. If you're asking the hard-hitting questions, I think the hardest-hitting question is, what is the best kind of chip? It's a cargo transport. That's a good question. Personally, I enjoy barbecue myself, and also I can also go for a jalapeno. What, what brand name? What advertising sponsorship are we getting? On the show. Question. Look who's been paying attention. Honestly, I do. I'm always in the then same you know uh, general opinion of many things. My favorite answer is free. Free is hard to beat. It is. Free chips. The the computer chips don't taste very good. You could use that. Come on, I don't want to hurt anyone. Isn't How about so yours? Much? It's just a robot uh, I'm, a, I'm a robots. big fan of variety bags of Doritos, especially when they're spilt. I like those quite a bit. So we're gonna grab our little, our little weapon here. This is our chip stealing gun. I know I said there wasn't any combat in this game, but I kind of lied. Uh, I honestly forgot about it. So we're gonna come over here and give this guy a couple of pickles. So he's got our chips and he's hoarding them. Three quick little pickles. Go. He's gonna realize the error of his ways and just give up the chips. There we go. So give that chip to Catherine because she's hungry. You know, being a robot takes a lot out of you. Thanks, Sometimes buddy. you need to eat. Don't be mad, okay? We really needed that ship. We'd, we'd be stuck here. Could you do it? Kill a robot like that? I get attached to them too. I'm not a monster. But in this case, it had to be done. He was talking. I mean, he was delusional, but he seemed sincere. This is part of the game where Simon kind of questions his morality, yeah, well, like... He knows sure at this fun. point that he's not he his really original body. He us? is in basically a robot it's body. Um, you do I'm hear really Simon sick. breathe and like pants a lot in this game, I'm but he's a robot, robot the entire Didn't time, so it doesn't already? really make sense. No uh, he doesn't have a mouth. Just keeps I don't know how that works, but uh, like my brain it's just in the game, so you don't feel weird, I guess. Yeah, could 
could you maybe hit that switch over there so we yeah, can get Catherine's like, I don't really yeah, sure. have time to deal with your nonsense, Simon. Just move on. Uh, so we're gonna Thanks. grab our door and we're just taking off because the Zeppelin's a little slow and we need to go do some other stuff. So we're just uh, sailing away into the void. This is a little bit sketchy of a hover because we're going into a map change. And if we're not far enough, uh, and we're not high enough up in the air, or in the exact wrong spot, then when the map loads in, we won't be uh, where we need to be, basically. Usually it's fine, but uh, every now and then, things go wrong, as they do. So here in a second, we should see the map change. There we go. So you can get stuck in this little box we're just going to the way. So you're still going to hear the dialogue of the Zeppelin ride, but you're only going to hear it from Simon's perspective because all the audio is proximity based. So you're not going to hear Catherine's yeah. side of it. So you just get these weird little splices of dialogue. Um, it's always fun to listen to. So we can't actually progress in the game without having the Omni tool, which is the the tool that has Catherine installed inside of it. But we're just setting some stuff up so that it's a little bit faster uh, once we do grab the tool, which is what? on the Zeppelin. Oh, sorry. I just can't stop thinking about what we've become. It's clear that we're no longer human. But then how can I feel like Simon? How can I feel like anything at all? I mean, technically, I don't have any ears, no mouth. Christ, that's a weird thing to think about. I mean, I'm making sounds. I'm still saying things. You certainly are. So we're gonna go up to this door. This door takes forever to open, and there's actually like a little maintenance thing that we have to do. Um, there is a really cool trick that we're gonna do for this, and sometimes if you're fast enough, you can set it up early based on how long it's gonna take so for the Zeppelin to arrive. I'm not going to set it up today because I'm not feeling like we went that fast, but uh, we're going to get it a little prepared. So once this door is open and we have the Omni tool, we're going to go inside, obviously, and we're going to put this into the doorway, and it's going to jam the door from the closet. Uh, but because that takes forever to open, sometimes we're able to, uh, to jam it in early and get it set up. It saves very small amounts of time. We gotta be over here, ready to pick up the Omni tool from the Zeppelin. So as Catherine gets closer, you're actually gonna hear the dialogue come back into play. Before you go, the artificial intelligence you mentioned did might have actually had time. Is it the WoW's fault that we're like this? I mean, it seems like something an unreliable AI would do. Who's Catherine? It's really complicated. You your way over, not as fast as you did, though. Right. Concentrate on getting inside data, okay? See you soon. I love Catherine's dialogue. She's basically like, I don't feel like explaining this to you. You're not going to understand it. Just continue on with what you're doing. She just kind of gets fed you up with that's, them. It's fair. Uh, Simon did ask, how big is the ocean? Right. Yeah, he's uh, definitely the most frustrating part of this game. But once again, he has brain damage. You have to cut him a little slack. Um, but yeah, it's like the biggest gripe most people have with this game. is it's, It gets frustrating listening to Simon kind of go over the same things multiple times. So we jammed up the doorway, and uh, we're going to load in the next level, but we're going to jump outside, jump back in. That kind of just makes things a little bit quicker. Nothing too big, nothing important, but sometimes it causes the door in the next level to spawn closer to you. It's not guaranteed, but maybe it's going to happen this time. It's a little weird. No. So yeah, sometimes this door back Hello? here will be in the middle Anyone of the room. So this is Theta. We're not going to see a whole lot of okay, Theta. We're going to go up through the ceiling. <laughs> going <laughs> down. And we need to... So there I'm falling into the void. There's a very certain, like, vent that you need to land on there. Uh, if you don't land on it, you're in the void. But luckily our saves are right here, so we're good. This is usually where you're running around, finding out all about the 
scans and how they work and uploading the consciousness. It's a really, really big level and you get lost very, very easily. But uh, <clears throat> luckily for us, we just fly on out of the map. And then we get to do a really cool jump. One of my favorites. Uh, a really quick way to lose height and maintain the prop is just to crouch. Uh, we can also just lose the prop, so we're gonna get a trigger to load in the next part. Wait for the game to actually give us a little loading bar. Or loading text. <laughs> There's this floor here, and then we get to do this really big jump and yeah, wee the whole way down. Wee! Yeah, a whole bunch of fall damage. You just kind of get uh, some weird visual effects. Slip back and downs. And we're at the end of the level. Really fun end to this level is uh, getting attacked by this guy, yelling and running down the steps. And he's a cutie. So we're going to go into this cutscene and we're going to go back to the apartment. It's kind of like a, a dream state flashback sort of thing. But I want you guys to pay attention to his gaming setup because it's one of the best probably of all time. Like it should go on r slash battle stations. It's, it's just perfect. Um, it does take quite a while to load for whatever reason. It's kind of weird. Any second now. I promise this is all part of the game. So yeah, here it's we go. Okay. He's got the nice setup. He's got the monitor. He's got now. an Xbox or something. Relax. He's got a power strip with two Actually, cords, although there's only two outlet slots. It's fine. Here? Hey, you know, it's great. A couple stew. Very nice. Makes me jealous, honestly. Yes. Looks perfect course, for speedrunning. What happened? He fell in love. So we're gonna snap out of it, back to reality. Now we're, uh, yeah, we're in this nice, disgusting raspberry jam. Uh, once again, we're inbound, so that means we're gonna do some clipping. This one actually doesn't use an item at all. We're just going to, like, jump at a corner and get out. I do this in a, a much sketchier way than a lot of other runners, but it seems to work for me. Uh, so we'll see if I can... This. There's a little spot you can stand on the other side of this wall. It's not very big. Use that to jump across. And now we're just going to run on the roof of the entire map. There's a lot of stuff clipping up through the ceiling. A lot of collision that you have to avoid. Uh, and it's also really dark, so you just don't want to jump into the void. going. Once again, the flashlight really doesn't help. doesn't do much, but it is what it is. Luckily, I've done this before. Coming up here, there is an invisible wall that we have to jump around. Right here. You just can't go any further, but you can jump out that way. And the clip back inbounds. We're going to jump on this vent, crouch, and just walk into the wall. And hey, here's a prop. Guess what we're gonna do? You guessed it, we're flying across the map. Is that a what floor sign? Yeah, you know. You, get, huh. you usually have some wet floors in the, in the ocean, right? <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. <laughs> hey, I guess we're gonna begin. Do you know that there's like rivers and lakes in the ocean? There's water in the ocean? Wow. I'm learning. Like, there's like actual like, shit, like <laughs> rivers and lakes. Yeah. But I said that fact like twice now. So how about another fact? Do you know that the world's largest mountain is in the ocean? Ooh. Yeah. Do you know the name of said mountain? No. I'm gonna look it up. There's two ways to do this part. Uh, there's kind of a less consistent but slightly faster way to do this map. And then there's a slightly slower but more consistent way. Uh, we're not actually going to do a hover here. We're going to do a clip. 
which I, I know it's... I told you guys it'd be the opposite if we're out on the ocean, we'd be doing hovers, but, you know. All right. Sometimes we'll all get lied to. So we're gonna go find all our right. friend Bomberman. I know you don't think he's in this game, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Instead of putting him in Smash, they put him in this game instead. Sorry. All right, so I got it. It's called Monakie? Or Monakie? Hmm? Yeah, apparently, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, apparently it's around Hawaii. Yeah, if you're wondering why this is called Bomberman, just look at that face. That's... I can see it. It's definitely Bomberman. Yeah, we're going to take this with us. Uh, we're going to use this to clip inside the Omicron. Uh, this is also a really heavy object, so we can't really jump with it, so we're going to do some more juggling. Go across this very sketchy set of scaffolding. Yeah, there's a, uh, like, a piece of metal that you can use, but because this object's bigger, it's going to be much easier to clip with. Uh, but it's a little bit slower because, like I said, you know, it's, it's heavier, so it's harder to move around. Pushing this against the wall, and then uh, we need to walk inside of it and then re-grab it. So we're letting go and grabbing it again really, really quickly. Push this to the side. Once again, if you, if you joined in or, or you missed the explanation, objects push you uh, out of their collision. Because when you first pick up an object, it doesn't have collision. But if it's intersecting with your own collision, uh, and you grab it again, so then it becomes a solid state item. We'll Trying to force you out by all means necessary, or by any means necessary, really. And it's looking for the shortest possible way to do that. And uh, in that case, it was through the wall. So. It doesn't care about the wall's collision, it just wants you out of the object. There we go. And the Obicron, the hardest and scariest split of all. Uh, mainly because there's a lot of stuff you have to do here. A couple clips, a couple hovers. That's fine. And there's only like one checkpoint. And it's not in a great spot. So if you happen to mess up, uh, it's not so good for you. Also, if this box touches these railings, it also gets deleted, so you don't want that to happen. I don't know why it happens. Those walls are, or these railings are very, very hungry. Clip through there. Solve this puzzle, which is always the same. Boop, boop, boop. Going on the lasers. So in this area, we're gonna be building ourselves a new robot body. We need all the parts to do that. Ideally, what's supposed to happen is you progress through this level, uh, and then you find out you need to do it, so you go and collect all the things. We're just collecting them before you even get to that part. So that was one piece we needed. Uh, that's why all these doors are locked, because we haven't gotten to that quest line yet. Uh, we can just clip through. There's a slightly faster clip you can do here, but it puts you out over the void, and you have to do some really crazy jumps. Uh, for me personally, it's not really worth the time save for a run like this. Going for a crazy fast time, or if you just reset on mistake, then yeah, you can go for it. Sometimes it's better safe than sorry. It's gonna do a pretty cool trick here. We're gonna open this just enough that we can look through this little gap and grab what we need. And then once again, the door's locked. We clipped in, so we need to clip out of it. I'll pick up this little tray. And that just went through the floor. Which, oh, okay, it's bad. Sweet. Bad. It's almost scary. So that was an instance if that actually got stuck in the floor, which can happen and we can't get it back out, then we have to do the entire level over again because the item just decided to uh, do what happens. It's another hover. We get past this next clip, then we get the checkpoint, and we're safe for a little bit. Whenever I set up these clips, I'm grabbing it so that it's in my body's kind of in the way that I want to clip. On the left side, it's prop. Not paving. Once again, there's gonna be another monster. It's a spooky game after all. You can't have a spooky game without some monsters. Although this monster is, is kind of slow and realizing that we're here and it's not gonna matter. Pick up our third piece, the robot suit, run away. And then there's 
Luckily, just a wall that you can walk through down here. Crouch into it. Now we're out of bounds. Now we're going to do a little safety save because although we got a checkpoint pretty close, um, this is by far the hardest section of the hardest level. So we're just going to do a little safety save. Some tough jumps, possibility of a soft lock, uh, and it's just things go wrong. It's a bad time. So wait for this game to load in. That's already bad. Hey, that's already bad. All right. <laughs> that wasn't the hard part, but hey, you know, that's just proving my point. Sometimes you need a little safety save. Nothing wrong with that. Wait for this game to load once again. I mean, hashtag that's never happened before. I've never seen that happen. <laughs> yeah, that's what you there got to say. There it is. Uh, on the upside, though, it does seem like this game is rather safe with the, the being able to have the safety saves. Oh, yeah. Anytime you get, you have the ability to make a manual save, whether it's you know, a hard save, quick save, whatever, it's so nice in the games. Every game should have manual saving. All right, so we're going to do a little jump here, jump around the corner. And yes, it is a very dark segment. Do some jumps up on collision. Ooh, that was the hard jump right there. So you have to jump out and around. There's actually like two walls you have to get around there, so it's real sketchy. And then we're going to clip back in, crouching, plug Catherine back in. And now she's going to give us the task of, hey, your body's kind of not great. Uh, so make a new body. Everything is so basic, so limited. So that we can continue. I hope it's not the Amatol falling apart. Okay, we need to find you a power suit. You know, so we can go into the abyss without ending up like a recycled can of soda? The new body is so that we can go deeper into the water, uh, down to the dark, dark depths of the ocean. Uh, you know how you were transferred from and our body is not going to hold the pressure. We, we got to build this new one. Okay, so but we already have the parts. You want to send we just have to, to no, you be careful with how we handle the section mind. because we already have the objects. It's very easy to soft lock if we do things in the wrong order. It is we have to actually deal, activate the quest line to get the stuff There's before we can really use it. Take us down there. Uh, there's some other the really interesting works about this area too. Then think of something else. Simon, please. You don't have to switch this instant, just... Yeah, more Simon not understanding, down. complaining, all, all, all the yada yada. Catherine being right, as she always it. is. Thank you, Simon. Have a look around the room. This is where they would keep the power suits, if there are any left. We're going to open the exit for the next part. We're going to start the terminal. Toss a box in there. Open the, the door to the power suit. Click on the power suit. We're going to unlock this door. And then we're going to wedge this chair into it. Because this door is supposed to slot, like close entirely. So yeah, we're going to wedge that in there. It stays open and it locks. So if you're stuck in here and you have to listen to a whole bunch of dialogue you don't want to listen to, this is actually one of the few times we can skip dialogue. This could work in our favor, though. Look for a terminal We're nearby. putting all the stuff into the body now, the, the three different things we got. This is crazy. Don't worry, it'll work. Make sure it's all bunched together with the structure jack and all the parts. All right, activate the, the seat from the terminal again. All right, so now there's dialogue usually you have to listen to. But uh, if we go back and play a... I can't believe like diary recording thing that's on a table back here. It's going to allow us to skip this. And also uh, another piece of dialogue later on. Now all the doors are going to unlock as we're going to see here. We're going to click this twice. You have to click it three times in total. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you click it twice here or twice the second time you come back. At some point, you have to click it three times. So I do two there and then one on the, on the way back. So the door's still locked, but it's jammed open by this chair. Back here. So now we're going to, once again, upload our consciousness. Um, and this is kind of the core moral question that the game presents. It's a lot more psychological horror. It makes you really think about a certain topic. What makes a person? Is no, it their consciousness? It is, is it their body? Is it, it together? Is it none of that. Right. Um, so we're uploading the consciousness of Simon and all of his knowledge at this moment. And it's staying in this body, but it's also oh, going to this new robot suit. Now there's two instances of this body. Uh, it's a fairly simple concept to kind of understand. Here. 
cloning, making duplicates, whatever. They both have the exact same memories. They both think they're the real Simon. Uh, no, I, it just... Why was it still talking? And now we are the consciousness the that is Catherine, over here. Why was he still talking? That's how it works. You know that. What do you mean? All we have to do is go back over here, skip some dialogue, and then we are out of Omicron. Overall, not too bad. Press the button again. We're also not going to do anything about this robot. You kind of get a choice whether you want to, like, mercy kill him or just, like, leave him here. Uh, but any of those is just kind of too slow, so we're going to pick Catherine back up on the Omni tool. Use that to open the next part. And we put this box into this air vent so we can actually clip back to the Omicron here. And it's going to start unloading around us, but if we come out here and stand on this little part, it's going to save us a bit of time in walking and waiting for the air vent to open. Once the new map spawns in, it's going to put us right where we need to go, essentially. Uh, but it's super scary just standing on, like, razor thin line <laughs> over top of void right you can see some god fish. that's trippy it grew into like a whole bridge yeah. so we're gonna plug her back in and this is the infamous elevator yeah. for speedrunners um it's a lot of waiting around there's like a little brief part that you have to like repair it as it's going down but it's a nice cozy comfy ride you know you get locked in Simon and Catherine kind of have a chat about, you know, their, their old lives and some other fun Step stuff. Luck, right? If you got any facts or questions of uh, right like, you know, moral dilemma questions so we're going to talk about. Uh, the great opportunity. Moral dilemmas? Yeah, you know, sometimes. Actually, I have one question. No is it possible to skip the elevator? I no. I couldn't do it. Uh, there is like a little fun thing you can do on the second part, like You're not right, sitting back down in the chair, but there's no way to skip it. Only if there was... Every summer runner would rejoice. It'd be a crazy fast time. Right? You didn't hit the make sure Simon wakes up the in the right body switch, did you? Where the next level loads is by having this go all the way down, so it's not like you can fall down into right the void side. and hit a trigger early. Christ. This is awful. We did an awful fucking Sometimes thing. in games, and you mind, a lot of times it's you? like, oh, if you click on a door, you know me, or if you walk into this area, is the end of the level, you go on to the next Please one. A lot of games, especially nowadays, will have a cutscene start or end a level. So there's no say. possible way to skip it because you just say. don't have control over it. Say anything. Like it starts on a cutscene, then you're just put into it immediately. There's I nothing you can do about it. At the end, the then you have to let it play out. So there's no other so way to continue on the game. It's kind of unfortunate. So the it is what it is. If you're doing a whole bunch of the grinding, it's a nice time to get some water, use the bathroom, stretch your legs, pet your animals, a lot of fun stuff. It's also a great time if you're enjoying this run or any other speed runs. Hop on over to my channel, click that follow button, come check out my streams, do a whole bunch of other horror games, doing some Resident Evil Village runs, getting ready for the Penumbra Trilogy for SGQ. Bioshock from time to time. Dishonor from time to time. Much like a Dice is here who runs, you know, 100 plus games. Uh, my count's up there. Not quite as much. It's a little bit lower. Sometimes it's quantity. Quality over quantity. But I went up to the roof many times after. I'm not religious, but I can see why people would be. The privilege of being makes a strong case. Yeah, shout outs to uh, It's Trigger the current record holder for this game. He's amazing at it. Uh, he is also very helpful in getting things set up. He's helped me with multiple things in this run, figuring it out, so... Shout to him for sure. We'll never be able to rebuild or reclaim what we were. Are you really so unhappy being what you are, or is this about the man who went for a scan a hundred years ago? Both, I guess. When I was back in Toronto, even the worst case, the darkest futures I could predict, they at least included my previous life. All I know is thanks to Ocean, we're going to go to an aquarium again. There's nothing here that I recognize, nothing that makes me feel like I belong. Aquariums are pretty comfy. Even if we make yeah, it dark, that was fun stuff. Would it be any different? It's like going to a museum, but it's not as boring. It's like, oh, there's fish, there's a stingray, there's a... Well, sometimes they let you touch the fish. Mm, I'm sure everyone would like to know the 
Oh, yeah, there's certain like uh, ones where you can like pet mana rays and stuff. So this is the spooky section. We got to go fix it real quick. It's very small amounts of gameplay. Uh, yeah, go up this ladder. Hello, Catherine. Push down a little oh, yeah, switch, and then we get to sit back in the chair. Why don't we stop moving? When you go to sit back down here, if you just hold backwards, you don't sit down. You kind of do this weird little motion back and forth. Uh, this doesn't really save any time, but if you really want to sit here and hold backwards for a minute or two, uh, whenever, spoilers, the monster shows up, uh, you kind of get to see him interact with an empty chair, which is kind of fun, but my hands are... I'm not gonna do that, so. Sounds like you're sleeping without the dream. So we get some insight into how Catherine sees the world because she's just like on the Omni tool. Um, and so she's nev she never gets a break. She never like goes to sleep. It's just whenever she gets unplugged, plugged back in, there's no time jump for her. It's just like an instant split. So it's super disorientating and stuff. Um, but her brain consciousness is also uploaded. But there's a real Catherine out there as well. Or that's kind of what they imply through here. They, they mentioned finding her down here in the dark depths where she works inside Tau. Spoilers, but we're gonna skip that a little bit. We never actually find her. Well, you do, but she happens to be long gone by the time we get there. We did it! We did it! Woo. This guy is so proud of us, man. Can't really be angry at him. He's, he's so encouraging. Catherine's over here yelling at us about not being smart enough, which is which is true. But then the wow's like, hey, you did it. Good job, buddy. And it's like, hey. Thanks, man. Uh, coming up is the, the scariest hover. Um, I'm actually going to pause it for a second because I'm going to move my OBS over to my other monitor, which seems strange. Uh, oh, good, but because of how my color settings and the gamma is Something on my other monitor, it makes it much easier to see when I'm doing this hover. Uh, like, my game feed's going to be basically I can't see anything, uh, but my OBS will be able to see where I'm going, hopefully. I was having some really strange issues last night on stream uh, where my game was just like 10 times darker than it's supposed to be. Uh, and even my OBS feed wasn't helping, so... Uh, hopefully tonight it's a little bit kinder to me. But yeah, if you guys can't see anything on this next hover, and it's going to be a pretty lengthy hover, uh, that's completely normal. And it's also a scary hover. It's not over the void, but the way this area works is there's different storms raging. And it's like, as you progress through the level, it's supposed to get worse, and the storms make it harder to see and all that stuff, and it also slows you down. So we're gonna try to go up high enough that we clear over certain mountains, uh, but we're also gonna go over top of the storm triggers. And if we don't go high enough, we hit those, and we go slower, and it becomes even harder to see, as I mentioned. Uh, and it's just, it's not good if you do this wrong. So we're gonna do another safety save down here. Turn on the flashlight. It doesn't really do anything, unfortunately. It'd be great if the flashlight brighten up the whole ocean, but it's the deep dark. Um, you know, we just took a really, really long elevator ride down to the, the ocean floor. So we're really far down here now. We're going to pick up this little box, container, whatever it is, uh, and we're going to use this to fly through this entire level. Uh, there's also a preload trigger that we need to hit along the way, which makes it even scarier. Uh, so we're going to have to drop like halfway through once I find out where I need to go. And then from there, we're going to have to do another hover, which is a little less scary that time around. Uh, or all the way. So here's another pipe in the ground, which is actually really convenient because it once again kind of just shows us the way. We're going we're gonna to go up pretty high. And I don't know if it ever comes through on the stream, um, but on the right-hand side, we're looking for the map to kind of unload a section, so it's going to be a little bit more gray than just pitch black. And that's going to be kind of a guiding line for me to see. Um, so now I'm up high enough, hopefully, and we're going to unscroll the item so it's far away and we can kind of walk. I'm going to jump a couple times just to be safe. Um, now we're going to be flying through here. So I'm looking at kind of middle left on the top side. It's hard to pinpoint this. Um, I'm looking for... 
<laughs> it's, it's even hard to describe it uh, when I'm looking at it. It's a little like dirt road in the water. It's a little bit more gray than anything else. Uh, hopefully it comes to one stream, but once we get there, you'll, you'll know it. Unless I mess up, then you're just gonna be seeing the reload screen and doing this all again. It's going. There's definitely when I was learning the run, it was one of the more off-putting uh, things about it is all these hovers through water. It's like, oh, you know, you're just hovering. It's not really anything exciting, but there is actually like a, a tense section when you're doing these. Like, you don't want to lose time here. You don't want to hit a storm. You don't want to just completely fail this. So there is some excitement to it. Uh, should be getting kind of close. Hopefully. Honestly, I think this is the hover in particular that I ended up watching the run once, and I was like, this looks hard. Yeah. So if you if, if it does come through on stream, there's like a little backward C. There's a 90 degree corner up here that we're going to land on. So I can actually see it, which is nice. We actually, um, mm -hmm. we have the GD Hue replay, which is on the, uh, it's like on the bottom left of the main screen, and it's kind of replaying it with maximum brightness turned on, so they can see a lot more. Nice. Yeah, we're going to safely fall down here at this corner. So right around here is where the preload trigger is. We're going to jump off. Uh, there's not really a storm here, but we're going to gain some height by just doing some simple jumps because there's another mountain we need to clear uh, towards the end of it. And the reason we need another preload trigger is because we want to keep this box into the next map. Uh, we don't want it to unload. There is a backup for if you just don't do this hover at all or if this happened, you know, you don't have to preload, which is all good. But the, the fast way is just to keep this with us, so we're going to hover this way. I might have gone a little too far right. The worst is uh, if you kind of feel like you went off in the wrong direction, maybe you strayed a little too far right or too left, and then you're second-guessing yourself. Uh, when in reality, you just need to go a little bit further, and you would have been fine. You definitely get in your own head there. But we should be coming up. Just passed over the mountain. We're looking, so, we're looking for some lights. I'm just going to indicate the... Uh, the Tau facility, which I think is right there at the squint. See it? Okay. Yeah, so there's a little light down there. We're gonna just hold a, our item, but a fast way of falling down is just to uh, look up so you bring the item out in front of you, and then you can just fall down safely. God, right. that was like the most wild surfing segment in a horror game we'll ever see. Yeah, it's the scariest part of this entire run. All right, I need to move this over here. In. We're not done with this item. What is happening? It's freaking out. Okay, that was kind of weird. So while the water's still going down, we're going to jump up here. Hopefully. Oh. You could just hover up, but it's pretty easy to just jump. And then once the water's down, we're going to use this to clip through the wall. And the map's going to change, and we're going to be out of bounds still. We still have some scary stuff in the run. There's a, a pretty tricky jump coming up here that we're going to do a little safety save for. Of course, we need to jump up here. Let's find which can be a little annoying at times. Okay. Some very, very fine parts of geometry that you need to stand on to get around here. i do a little save and exit. There's like a, an auto save you can get that's a little bit further back by the beginning of this level. But uh, I always tend to just bypass it and do a safety save here. So what we're doing in Tau, uh, kind of what we've been doing for a while, is we're messing with this thing called the Ark, which is humanity's last salvation, basically. Uh, everyone who's had their consciousness scanned, uh, their data is being put on the Ark, which is being blasted off into space, or that's, you know, that's our goal, is to blast it off into space so that humanity, quote-unquote, survives. Uh, 
Although most of humanity is wiped out from the comet that hit Earth, it's our goal to uh, basically make sure at least their consciousness survives. So we're gonna get back in bounds by sitting on this bed. There's a spooky ghost here. We're gonna just go ahead and bust that ghost real quick. And then we need to clip back out of bounds. So we need to interact with um, that lady. I can never remember her name. So that we can come out here, pick up the arc, which is right here. Get out of bounds. And then we need to drop down. So we're gonna crouch, slide off. Into the void. For some reason, it didn't want to drop me straight down. So, there's also a really, really precise trick that you can do to extend this out of bounds a little bit further. Um, and you get into the final room of the level. But it's a little tricky, and the setup is not one I'm a big fan of doing. So, unfortunately, do this jump again. Got a rope on the outside. <laughs> trick so nice we gotta do it twice or you know maybe even three times well, well, from what we learned earlier it's always first try because it's all one long attempt true one big attempt it's like how all rng is actually a 50 50 chance either it happens or it doesn't happen That is how stats work. Exactly, right? Definitely definitely nothing else more intricate than that. Right, do all this stuff that we talked about again, you know, just in case you missed it. I just like sitting in the bed. You know, it's real nice, it's real comfy. And for all those people in chat, sad that we're skipping so much story, don't worry, we're gonna get the whole story experience at the end of the game. Uh, just you wait. So pick up the arc once again. Hopefully it lets me just fall down. There we go. So we get these little life pods. Um, the whole goal is to bring the arc down to the basement. You're supposed to use this little elevator to do that, but uh, we can just take the, the easy way down. Yeah, there's a, a way to get past this door a little bit quicker. Um, but it's a, it's a really, really precise trick. I'm just not falling up to it the end of the day. Sometimes backup strats are the way to go. We loading up the arc to attach it. We're basically taking it to another station so that we can launch it. We're going to actually swipe this Omni tool twice because it makes this part go faster. I guess we're going to third. You usually have to wait a couple seconds for these pipes to be breakable, but if you haven't scanned Omni tool twice, then you're just gonna do it a little faster. Yes, house of dreams. The thing we're holding the arc is currently stuffed with all that really remains of humanity. Um, the person, the, the ghost in the chair was like the last living person. Um, as far as we're told in the story. Uh, so now everything that remains is just consciousness stuck into robot bodies like Simon uh, and the other various robots around the area that we've dealt with. But using this, the ones that Again, do a little bit of a hover. This one doesn't skip a whole lot. There is a part where you have to deal with the wow, which um, if it is bright enough, you kind of see the area on the left as we pass over, but we're just gonna follow this train car uh, and we're gonna go into Phi, which is where the arc launches from. Yeah, on the left, you can see you the path- you on top of that thing? Uh, on, on top of the train track, yes, but there's a, uh, like a wall up here for some reason. Um, that you have to hover over regardless, so. Yeah, all of that, I believe, has collision. Never really tried to walk on it, but I would assume it does. Oh, turn on my flashlight. Gotta make sure you do that. 
This bright, I say bright, this, this faint light on the left side, that's where all the wow stuff is. Uh, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna bypass all of that. Once again, we ha we had this nice, convenient line just, like, pointing us in the, the direction that we need to go. It's like, hey, just follow the train track, and you're going to be at the end of the level, so you don't have to worry too much. And a really <laughs> unfortunate thing about running this game uh, is something that's happening to me right now. If, if you have an itchy nose during any of these hovers, and your left and right hand are both occupied by holding forward and holding the item, uh, there's just no way to itch oh. your nose, and it's just, it's awful. It happens every time I do a long hover. Never any other time, um, but you know, we'll suffer through. We have a little light there, which means we're getting close to the end. Looking for the entrance. So once we get in the fire, we have one really kind of cool clip that we get to do. And then it's all about launching the arc and suffering through Simon's stubbornness, we'll say. Uh, it's a very polite way of saying it. So here's the end. We don't need to keep this item with us, but we are going to use it to kind of open the door a little bit quicker if we get on the inside and pull it out. Open the door just a little quicker. Scratch the nose a couple times. All good. You're not going to see... Uh, you're, we're going to get a black screen here because we didn't hit any preload trigger, but we don't need to. It's all good. And then this is going to be kind of this, like, last area. That we have to sit through. Good gameplay here. Also, the airlocks or whatever you want to call these little sections between the outside and inside are extremely long in this game. The doors take forever to open. The water takes forever to drain. It's kind of a byproduct of the game's loading. Depressurization. So while we're waiting for the door, uh, do you have any shout-outs you would like to give to anybody? Uh, I mean, just the entire Soma community for finding all this stuff. Pretty great people. This has to be five, right? All right. Pretty cool. The Ark made it here in one piece. We're gonna grab this book. It's, um... It's a nice book. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't, I don't know the topic of it, but hey. Grab the corner, and we're gonna crouch jump our way into this little section. We're gonna jump up through the map, and then we're going to pull the item close to us and far away and just push it through the map so we can bring it with us. And we're gonna jump on top of it and just ride it over, bypassing whatever gameplay was left in the section. And this is where we get to launch the arc. So we're gonna plug Catherine back in. It's in this really comfy chair. I think it's made by DX Racer, but I'm not sure. After, not after this is over. Have a seat. And you know what to say about speedruns is get. that only okay, the best speedruns have she crane games. In. If your game doesn't have a crane game mechanic, it's just not a good speedrun. That's like one of the first couple of rules about speedrunning. No, no, so luckily this game Dino does Crisis have one of those. A good speed run. Exactly. So a Doom 3, Dino Crisis, Number Black Blade. The only one I knew was Dino Crisis. I'm trying to think of what else I know that had cranes. Dino Crisis mainly. We're gonna use this to load the arc uh, basically into a giant cannon that's gonna blast off into space. And now we get to sit here and listen to Simon and Catherine kind of just talk about some stuff. Uh, and this is the part that kind of gets frustrating because the whole time we've been talking about consciousness, okay, well, at least in a casual playthrough. We need to transfer um, lines to the arc. About, like, need to make sure when you make a copy, so the other one doesn't go away, you don't carry on, it's just, just a separate off. copy that continues on without you. And we've always been playing as the Simon that is continuing on, and not the one that, as they put it, loses the coin flip. We're never the one stuck in the past. Um, and while we're making another copy of herself to put on the arc, unfortunately, one Simon does have to stay behind. And the one that stays behind is the one that we're stuck with, and he doesn't understand the concept of one getting stuck behind, and he kind of freaks out, and there's some bad language. If you're not into that, he gets a little upset, to say the least. 
Uh, he kind of lashes out. Ten seconds. It makes Catherine feel no, bad. No. For no Eight reason. Seconds. It's not her fault. Seven, seven. Yeah. Six. Six. Five. Four. Four. Three. He tried his best. The arc went off. Humanity survives on. Um, but here we are, the bottom of the ocean, with no way to continue on. Nothing. It's a it's a horrifying existence. We're here. No, we were getting on the arc. I saw it. Finished. And then when you speed run it, he does this quite literally every run. <laughs> You were copied onto the Ark. You just didn't carry over. You lost the coin toss. We both did. Just like Simon and Omicron. Just like the man who died in Toronto a hundred years ago. No, no, no. This is bullshit. We came all this way. We launched the Ark. I know it sucks. But our copies are up there. Catherine and Simon are both safe on the Ark. Be happy for them. Are you crazy? We're gonna die down here with those fuckers living at large on a spaceship. They're not us. They're not us. I'm sorry you feel that way, Simon. I'm proud of what we did. We made sure that something of the hundreds of thousands of years of human history survived, that something lives on. No, 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 no. Fuck this. Fuck. Fuck this. Fuck you. Fuck you, Catherine. You lied. And I believed in you. And I trusted you. You said we're getting on the fucking Ark. We are on the Ark, you idiot. I didn't lie. I can't be responsible for your gun. So he went up through all that, realizes he didn't make it on the Ark, and now the power's out, so Catherine's gone. His one companion, Catherine? one thing to keep him company's gone. Uh, we're gonna get credits here, but it's not the end of time. There's actually some gameplay after the fact that does count towards the time, so once we get, like, 10 seconds into this, we're able to skip the credits. Um, because from my understanding, they did some playtesting, and people weren't too happy with the, the way the game ended. It's not a very positive ending. Um, so you also get the ending of being on the Ark. So the Simon that wins the coin toss is now playing Minecraft with RTX turned on. And it's beautiful, you know? The Ark is pretty cool. It's not like the ocean at all. I'm just gonna run down here. Experience all that life has to offer on the Ark. Yeah, once again, if you guys like this run, if you like Frictional Games runs, Amnesia, Penumbra, or a lot of modern FPS games, horror games, puzzle games, you can find me on my own Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash bloodthunder. If you want to find any of my content, any of my old speed runs, any of that stuff, just go to bloodthunder.tv. Search around there, you'll be able to find it. Uh, you know, a lot of GDQ appearances, if you're on the, the GDQ YouTube. Catherine? But hey, it's Catherine. We finally get to meet her in person. Catherine. And there she is. And that is I can't fine. believe we actually made it. Well, we did. I'm so relieved. All right. Yeah, this Simon has no idea that he's on the Ark, or I guess he has no idea that one lost the coin toss. We get a little glimpse of Earth, and it's uh, the impact after the comet and everything that happens. Yeah, all of humanity is on the Ark, just floating in space forever. Maybe that's where we are right now, if you think about it. Maybe. But right now, we're on speedruns from the crypt. Tell me Ooh. more about it and when you can watch it again. Let's show every two weeks. So we'll be back next Wednesday. Not next Wednesday, the following Wednesday. It's all fun stuff, but what I'd like to hear from you, now that we've finished with Soma, is if people want, I know we said it, but if people want to find you once again, where can they find you on Twitch? Yep. And anywhere else, really. If you want to find me on Twitch, just twitch.tv slash bloodthunder. All spelled correctly, one word. Uh, if you want to find any of my other social media, Twitter, YouTube, Discord, any of that, just go to bloodthunder.tv. It's, it's going to be the easiest way. Um, name gets taken on, on other accounts, and you got to change, like, some letters around and underscores and all that stuff. So uh, just go there if you want to find those extracurriculars. But yeah, thanks for having me. Ocean Week was a blast. You know, I've always got to represent Bioshocks. 
So I'm exactly, a, a lot I'm of like aquatic games. So it is fun stuff. Before we uh, head on out, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, if you want to see me again and you don't feel like watching my channel, I'll be back on GDQ. Uh, I think it's on the 4th or 5th when SGDQ rocks around. It'll be the Penumbra Trilogy, another game series, I guess, by Frictional Games. It's their early work. It's a lot more broken than this. It's three runs done in under an hour. So, so it's a good time for sure. All right. Well, that being said, I think it's about time to wrap up our show for this week. I do want to say uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for joining us for this uh, aquatic feature of games for kind of Ocean Week. It's weird because we're a part of Ocean Week, but we're not a part of Ocean Week. We're aquatic. That's what matters. And we took some deep dives into the depths of horror. Uh, as well, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, we are a Speedruns from the Crypt, a bi-weekly horror show. That means every other week. We'll be back... Not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, and we'll be uh, showcasing probably a very requested game at that point. That's the hint I'll give for that. I'm not going to say any more. It'll be a very, uh, I guess, expected game. Let's go with that. I've been your host, Igdysis. Uh, if you do enjoy these shows and what we put together, uh, you can always check me out as well. I talk about the schedule. I talk about how I plan these. I talk about a lot of these things on my own Twitch, Twitter, all that jazz. You can find me by looking up Igdysis, E-C-D-Y-C-I-S. Uh, that being said, I do hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. And yeah, hope you all have a good rest of the day, everyone. Uh, before I do go, though, I just want to remind you that tomorrow we'll be having the first step with Hobbs and Keys racing Song of the Deep. And as well, a special thank you to the Monterey Bay Aquarium for joining Bargain Bin earlier today and just a variety of the shows this week. You'll be seeing more of them uh, as this week continues if you want to stay, you know, up to date on all the ocean and water facts. Um, that being said, thank you, have a great night, and uh, we would love if you join us for a raid to an upcoming water-themed channel. This week we're going towards something water-based, so we're we'll finding an ocean game. Anyway, take it easy. <laughs>